Punching Up, a Nintendo podcast, is brought to you by you. If you want to learn how to support our show, go to patreon.com slash laststandmedia. Everybody. Welcome back to Punching Up, your bi-weekly Nintendo podcast from Last Stand Media. I'm your host, Dustin. Sticking around. You can't get rid of me yet. I'm not leaving till the last second. We are just we were just talking before this. Potentially moments or days away from our firstborn being firstborn being born. But I'm still here. I'm not leaving, as I said. So until then, you got me. You'll eventually get Brad. Let's introduce the crew, Micah. How are you today? I'm doing very well, Dustin. We were not expecting to have you with us today, so we're very no. glad we get another episode with Dustin. I'm happy to report not only did I go to Cracker Barrel for my birthday recently, oh. but I get to go again next week because my parents are going to be in town. So, I mm. mean, look at me going to Cracker Barrel twice within a you know three-week span here. I'm living the high life, Dustin. Wow. Yeah, I... Cracker Barrel was a road trip spot for us in college when we would go to visit my parents in in D.C. But I have not I have to say I've not been there in. Maybe eight years ish oh. now, but you got Eaton Park, which is we like honestly just as good. I miss that place so much, man. Like mm-hmm. that was the best part of Butler was going to Eaton Park. Oh, my God. It was so good. Eaton Park. I can understand its luster from someone on the outside. It has no luster to me anymore, (laughs) especially because it's not 24 hour anymore. It used to be pre COVID. You could roll up there at midnight, 1 a.m. and get yourself a delicious breakfast smile, as they call it. Not anymore, though. Now you got to, you know, they got hours. It's unfortunate, but the Eden Park still legendary place, of course. Also. Gene. Park of the Washington Post. Hello. That was extra dramatic. I don't know why. Probably because I, I couldn't think of what to say. <laughs> I was like, I what was am I doing? anyone else that you're here. Um, wasn't it today or something? Like the, the expectation date or, or whatever? It's uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow's the due day. That's crazy. Due date. I forgot that's what yeah. it's called. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good. We're not kid people. <laughs> <laughs> Expectations. Um, when, is, yeah. when is it ready? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, his expiration date. Are, are we there yet? <laughs> um, yeah, I just can't. I, I I can't even imagine what's going through your head. Like I've never felt like so, um, like attached to like someone's pregnancy <laughs> as yeah. I have with, with you and Holly's. I've never, I, I've never, I've had, I have like godchildren, and I have like really close friends who had, you know, my my best buddy in the whole world, Joey, has a kid now. Um, but for some reason, I feel especially, you know, you know, like immersed into your experience like yeah dustin you know it's well it's funny Um, micah joked we're not kid people i don't consider myself a kid person at all Mm -hmm. Uh, i'm going to be one way or another very Mm -hmm. soon but i will say that so when you find out that your wife is pregnant you have about nine months to mentally prepare yourself which is great i love that in fact as far as having a kid and go the delivery itself i feel super ready like 10 out of 10 let's mm-hmm. go what i wasn't prepared for was every day or, or every day and night wake like going to bed being like is is tonight the night that holly wakes me up at four in the morning and says mm-hmm. it's go time mm-hmm. every night for the yeah. past week with increasing odds and then just kind of floating around it, it's weird because i'm not on leave yet but holly is but I kind of feel like I am because she's it's not that she's not leaving the house at all. Like we're going for walks and, and stuff like that. But we're just kind of hanging out, playing everybody's golf. Holly's playing mother three and just a very chill. It's a chill atmosphere. And also like, OK, well, at any moment, our lives change forever. When's that moment going to be? We and- don't know. You got to make, I told Holly, and you got to think about this. Did you hear about the baby that was born at the Golden Corral? And they gave the mom a bunch of Golden Corral <laughs> gift cards. You got to yeah. have that baby at a Chippers. All right. Just Dude, think chippers, about it. Chippers, 
Chippers or Aldi. I mean, Aldi would Either also be. One. I think it was Colin, maybe it was someone throughout the idea if it's at Aldi, does he get a dual citizenship with Germany? So, you know, <laughs> something like that. If he's born in the parking lot, a lot of a lot of possibilities. But, but yeah, we're just kind of waiting around. But I appreciate to hear you're invest, invested. This is, It's kind of nice, you know, like a lot of people have checked in. It's like, so oh, what's going on? I'm like, uh, nothing to report. Yeah. Right now. I, I, and I see listeners saying, man, I'm actually going to miss Dustin. <laughs> I think people are realizing, <laughs> I think people are actually realizing the value, the, finally the value you bring to the organization. Colin will realize that too someday. But Someday. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, Ben, Ben and Lockmort are primarily taking over my job. We have Jimmy on thumbnails. So we've got a whole system and crew lined up ready to go at a moment's <clears throat> notice we'll see if if the content comes out real uh <laughs> i don't want to say i mean it's not going to control what's on the content but if there, there's probably going to be a hiccup or two in release i'm guessing when it happens but they'll, they'll it'll be fine they'll get the flow down so this is when dustin you know you're going to be in the delivery room you're going to do something like change our youtube password just to just yeah. to fuck with us, you know, and then they'll be like, we can't log in, and you'll be like, oh, I guess I well, have to step in, wink, wink, like I guess you I know, prove it. your value once again, right? <laughs> yeah, something like that. I think that could work. But yeah, it should be fun. Uh, this is punching up, as I said at the top. This is our Nintendo podcast. Thanks everybody for joining us. Uh, I mentioned, well, actually, perfect time to read this question as our as part of the intro from James Solar, who says, first Dagan, now Dustin." Who's Brad going to fire next? Hope you're all on your best behavior and don't do anything to upset Brad. Best James S. So yes, James, Brad, he's on a killing streak right now. And next, I don't know who who will take out. That's a good question, but he will be taking over for this show when I'm gone. Certainly next episode. Certainly. Uh, By that point, there's no possibility that the baby is still in Holly at that point. It's going to, we're going to, I mean, push him out if we have to um, <laughs> s- one way or another, he's going to be out. So Brad will be in. Look forward to that. I'm excited to see what he does with the show. I, I, you know, he has the outline, but I kind of told him like, well, you don't have to do it just like me. Do whatever you want. I don't care. Burn it to the ground. And he said, cool. But no, he'll do a great job. Looking forward to that. Of course, I got to ma- mention off the top this show supported by Patreon, patreon.com slash last stand media, where thousands of you go and support us every month. We really appreciate it. At the five dollar level, you get early access to this show, Sacred Symbols, Defining Duke, uh, Summon Sign, everything, Constellation. You get early access along with the ability to write in as James did a few moments ago. And let's go ahead and lead into another write in to kick us off, though this one. <sighs> I think this is a snark tank thing. People with these names to get us uh, to this one is actually kind of tame from what I've seen. But this comes in from the 2024 Olympic torch kind of looks like a giant butt plug in parentheses, Austin. So, Austin, thanks for that. He says, it, hello. It looked, like a, it looked more like a blunt or a joint, though, didn't it? I mean, what? it was Snoop Dogg, right? That was exactly. Yeah, it was Snoop Dogg. yeah. So why? Well, I mean, why would Snoop Dogg be holding a big butt plug? Because butt plugs have, haven't been Snoop Dogg's thing, you know. Uh, ever i mean his first yeah. album was called doggy style but right you right. can't really doggy style if there's a butt plug in there you know right so yeah you know the, i don't know i haven't seen a well the only thing i've seen from the olympics is like tiny little clips on twitter and that's yeah it. same here well all i've seen is that that korean woman uh the the, the sharpshooter uh woman yeah what is yeah. going on with that she's got like a ghost in the shell like cyberpunk thing and i guess that's normal for yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shooting? I've never seen that in my life. Ever. I will. Uh, why have we never heard about this? Like, like, why, why, why hasn't this gone viral before 2024? You know, right? Um, like fencing, of course. Fencing's always been there, right? And then so mm-hmm. I've seen some fencing clips go viral, and it's like, okay, well, yeah, that looks like, that looks like fencing. But sharpshooter, it's like, whoa! Why does everyone? Why, why does everyone look hot? You know? Oh yeah. Um, and they all have these super cool glasses, you know, and, and, and these amazing looking guns that are these amazing gun designs that look straight out of a video game that look straight, that look better than the desert gun designs for the most part, you know? Yeah. yeah. It, uh, 
I, I, you're right. And then I just, I don't know why it's taken this long for anyone. Is this a new thing in the last four years that they start wearing these cyberpunk super? I imagine that it's something that's like almost like a Dragon Ball Z, like, you know, power, level reader yeah, or, but it has like reader. zoom capabilities and stuff. I don't know, mm-hmm. but it's pretty neat. Anyway, Austin's question here. Some, something we continually get asked that I wanted to address. He says, hello, mm. box beater uppers. <laughs> what say you to going weekly okay. while knockback is on hiatus? I get the distinct feeling that big boss Colin is feeling overworked. What with the extra episodes of plus and he's stated desire to appear less on Steli, but mostly I think everyone would love more Micah. Thanks. Well, that's nice. Damn, the t- I, that was unexpected. Yeah. Mm. Was, you know, the, the, the I was going to read his whole name again. I realized it just wouldn't be funny <laughs> <laughs> to just. So Austin, that was very nice. But with that said, we've talked about going weekly. It's definitely not under any circumstances happening right now uh, or really until we feel that there's a need that we would have things to talk about that are worth talking about on a weekly basis. I could see that around the launch of the next console, we have a stint where we go weekly. But I I think we're all on the same page. We're just like, there's just unless we completely change up what the show is and start to like lean into older stuff as well. It's just, Mm -hmm. I never want this show to feel like a news ticker where we're just, I'm just spouting out information. That's not worth talking about or not interesting. Mm -hmm. And so for the time being, you're going to have to get your punching up every other week, but Mm -hmm. I don't know. Colin, what do you think? Micah, what do you think? (laughs) Is this Colin is feeling overworked with extra episodes desire to appear on stilly less. I think this is, I think let Mike a host constellation. <laughs> oh God. I mean, I don't know how that would go. Am I ready for that? Can I host a show like that? I don't know. I have my doubts. I don't know. I mean, but, I think we just, you don't throw you in the deep end, right? Like your first yeah. show doesn't have Jaffe on it. Of course. Cause That's- he's like the <laughs> chaos agent. Unless I mean, trial by fire where you just kind of get thrown in and you try to wrangle it, but then you learn you simply can't. Or just so, let him have it, you know? Well, when Jaffe's on, he's running the show. We're going to call up some cam girls. We're going to call a game store. We're going to do what, what we do. <laughs> I, uh, I was seeing so many comments about, I mean, people, some of them loving comments, some of them not so nice about Jaffe, Jaffe's interruptions, which I know he acknowledges and says he wants to get better at. My thought was, and I should, I need to suggest this to him, make that into content. Like, you know, Gene, your boy Kai, he had the therapist on when he was when he was fighting the last boss of Elden Ring. Mm-hmm. Jaffe, have a speech guy come in and coach you live about interruptions as part of the content. I think it could yeah. work. Let's mm-hmm. monetize our treatment. That's an idea. Like that's no, exactly I, what we need. <laughs> I'm all of our you. illnesses. Monetizing. Exactly. That's content. Oh, hell yeah. No, I mean we could I have so much. I <laughs> we could get into, I mean, like, first we have the lead poisoning, right? We can speak, talk to a specialist about that. We can talk about my hair combing syncope, which means if my hair is pulled too hard, I'll pass out. I don't know if I've ever mentioned that on a show before. That That's a legitimate nope. medical condition that I have. <laughs> I've never heard that, but it doesn't sound too outlandish. I mean, that sounds more normal than one sock. Oh, me. well. Like, I believe that. Somebody on Twitter, though tried one sock in it this week and he said he fell asleep immediately so mm. i i'm converting people to this there's also half sock where you have the socks half on your foot either one but you know we we could absolutely get a therapist in here and maybe that could be some content have them kind of work through our issues yeah this could be good yeah how do we make content and monetize every aspect of our lives <laughs> I mean, some people already kind of do this, you know, the IRL oh, yeah. streamers. So I'm Dustin, you live stream, you know. OK, literally, though, there are so many YouTube videos of people who like film their labor and delivery and it'll be and then they'll be like sponsored by and it's like some house cleaning service or some bullshit like that. I I saw so many of those on YouTube because once I started buying baby shower presents for the people mm-hmm. in our lives who are having babies this year. I was just inundated with baby videos and content and ads. The number of women who were willing to share this just on their rinky dink YouTube channel. I was like, this is crazy to me. This is absolutely crazy. But Dustin, it's an idea. 
I have a question for you guys. Yeah. When you were in either high school or college, did you ever have to watch a video of someone giving birth? Oh, well, yeah. let me think. High, high school. school? High school? My, I wasn't allowed to do sex ed in high school. No, my mom wouldn't sign the paper. So Okay. Uh, but I watched a lot of A Baby Story on TLC, which is mm. about, so they don't show everything because it's right. on TLC, but you know, you're there, they're screaming the whole time. I yeah, loved that we, show as a kid. We had to see the whole thing coming out and, 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 the, <laughs> and it, it, it looked like the Orphan of Cause cutscene, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah, uh, exa- I know exactly did, what you're talking it about. It did, yeah. And Bloodborne. So when I saw Bloodborne, uh, I was... The, the, the you know spoilers for the final boss of DLC I guess from like eight years ago but uh, <laughs> yeah Bloodborne when I saw the orphan of cause I was like oh my god it's giving birth that's disgusting because that's exactly what it looks like it it, it looks like a Bloodborne it looks like a Bloodborne incident you know so right <laughs> yeah. birth birthing is a Bloodborne incident yeah it is I, I mean well that's what Bloodborne is all about anyways right so yeah dude the umbilical yeah. cords all that I mean <laughs> yeah certainly is a baby is a baby not DLC did you not in a way download some new content yeah created yeah. it I mean yeah, is a baby, baby not DLC for baby your life is content Dustin is a content creator yeah baby Dustin is content this all loops back baby yeah. is content so and you know what this is PewDiePie shifted his whole channel now to being a family vlogger basically so right. you could pivot to that dustin you start filming your trips to uh your amusement parks that you like with cedar mm. park whatever it's called you you start live streaming all that type of stuff baby's first roller coaster baby's first french fry this is a whole new world for you dustin this kid is he's going to be the next big justice which i know gene has to know who that is have you I seen don't know this, what that is this big- <laughs> Big, the Costco guys. No, oh, I've never heard of this. I don't know. Wow. Usually, I feel like Gene oh, is more oh, those kids, the the, 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 the the dad and the kid. Yeah, the like super Italian guy. They're like, is it boom yeah. or is it doom? It's, oh, there uh, you go. Yeah, big big justice adoption and he'll. Oh, they're adopted. Anyways, I, they don't look adopted. Yeah, they look. They totally look like they're related. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you, if you don't know about this, check out the Big Justice guy is Costco. They, they, they go viral on TikTok. So father and son just really loving Costco. And like, you know, people on Twitter are like, this is cringe. And everyone's like, no, this is, this is actually rules, dude. Like, imagine having a dad that loves you that much. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, I, mean, I, I certainly didn't have that shit either. You know, my dad wasn't terrible, but like, holy shit, man. That is like a real fatherly kind of like, you know, it's kind of like it's cartoonish, you know. Yeah. Right. Well, but I mean, that's what it is. That that's what they're they're playing up. It's 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 very cartoony, but it's very wholesome. It's good stuff. We will uh we'll become the new Costco guys, but we'll be the Aldi guys. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and that will be cringe, but we'll lean into it, so it'll be fine. All right, guys, let's get into some Nintendo related news. <laughs> At this point, first of all. Uh, let me see. I, I listened to make sure to get this name right. It's Davide Soliani, okay. the, cre- uh, the creative director of Mario Plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. He's leaving. He's leaving Ubisoft. Uh, Soliani announced via Twitter. Hi, all folks. After 25 years, 11 of which beautifully spent working with Nintendo on Mario Plus Rabbit's along the company of our incredible community of players, I've decided to leave Ubisoft to embark on a new adventure. I can't say more now. Thanks a lot for everything, truly. So, uh, some of you may remember around the time that Mario plus Rabbit's Kingdom Battle. I find this game so interesting, or this series, I guess there's two of them. It's so interesting how they were able to change the conversation around these games so quickly just by showing it. I remember the leaks, the rumors, the horror of Rabbids and Mario being together. And then it turns out they made an awesome, like, X, X, uh, XCOM light with Mario, and people were all into it. And of course, many people may remember Davi Day as the guy who was crying mm-hmm. at E3 when Miyamoto pointed him out. Really mm-hmm. feel-good story. But now he is, as, as I said in the write-up, he's stepping away from Ubisoft, doing his own thing, so, of course, speculation running wild. Could he be either going to another just another company, be starting his own company? Or, of course, could he be taking a role at Nintendo? 
This one has been highly speculative just because it was clear that he had some level of relationship with Miyamoto. They pitched, they were able to pitch the game to him directly, and Miyamoto was really impressed with it. To the point now we have two games, but a lot of speculation about what's going on. So, Gene, I'll throw this to you first. I, I'm assuming you checked this game out at some point. What do you think about this? What do you think about Mario Plus Rabbids in general? Just because that came out, I mean, way before we started the show. Mm -hmm. That's true. Uh, have you guys played it? Uh, either Kingdom Battle or Sparks of Hope? I started the first one and never oh, no. finished it. I yeah, wasn't really uh, into it, but I thought yeah. it was cool. I loved Kingdom Battle. Um, I wonder, and, and a lot of people did, and it sold really, really well, right? I wonder if a lot of that has to do with the fact that it came out on the launch year for the Switch, right? When, you know, it's it's a Mario property. What, 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 did, did it come on launch year? I don't think it came on launch year, but pretty early, right? I'll um, take a look. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I just really, really loved it. Uh, the, the storytelling was amazing. Uh, right before This was before Luigi's Mansion 3. I think Mario Kingdom Battle uh, had the most impressive CG uh, uh, movie cutscenes of a Mario game ever uh, before Luigi's Mansion 3. Um, so that was impressive. The, the music uh, was by Grant Kirkhope of Donkey Kong Banjo-Kazooie fame. So the music was excellent. Um, and he was even able to do remixes of the Donkey Kong theme uh, during the rabid Donkey Kong uh, boss fight, which is actually the first uh, boss fight in Kingdom Battle. Um, I highly recommend everyone at least get to that part before uh, writing off Kingdom Battle. Kingdom Battle is tough because it, it's tutorial heavy. Uh, there's so many tutorials. It's a Mario, it's it's a Nintendo game, and it, it it's kind of they're worried about about how people introduce people to the XCOM uh, uh, type of uh, battle system. And to be fair, their battle system is pretty unique. Um, I did play Spark Sparks of Hope. I did not finish it. I only got maybe about halfway through. Um, came out at a busy time, right? Uh, and again, the, the concept was a little old, but in Sparks of Hope, um, you can move the character anywhere within the, within their movable space. So you don't have to move grid, grid by grid. So there were some uh, interesting advancements uh, in, in the uh, tactical strategy uh, genre too. But overall, and they added some verticality too. So you can jump, uh, you can jump on uh, characters and you can use that jump to boost uh, Mario or Luigi or any other character up to more uh, higher up areas to get to get the higher ground advantage. Um, very, very difficult too. Uh, surprisingly difficult. Um, I, I remember I was stuck on the last boss of uh, Kingdom Battle for, for hours, actually. It was it was like an Elden Ring fight for a little bit. Um, and you really, really had to figure it out. And when I won, I I, I remember it was a it was a it was a nail biting finish. I barely mm -hmm. won. So these games are challenging. They're not easy. Um, don't get it twisted that they, that these are babies for his XCOM, because by the end of the game, uh, they'll actually ramp up the challenge pretty much, and you will have to have like perfect move sets and like like a good the great strategy to to figure things out. Um, it's fun to level up uh, the characters too, um, but yeah, it, 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 it was the closest thing I had to a Mario RPG before they finally re released Super Mario RPG and the Paper Mario games, right? So that's kind of like where I found the value and the enjoyment out, enjoyment out of Kingdom Battle. That this was like the, this was like the Switch's Mario RPG, you know. Um, and it was made by Ubisoft, you know, who, who's been cooking with gas lately, and we can talk later about that. But David Davide Soliani, hats off to you, you know, the, uh, you you really really made rabbits work. Um, yeah, and it also made me realize that I actually like the rabbits as a character, you know. Oh. Um, they're a little bit more interesting than minions, uh, you know. Even though the like, minions is obviously the very, the 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 the, the cultural uh, parallel, but they're a little bit more interesting. And uh, you know, I really liked the the rabbit versions of the Mario characters. Rabbit Peach, of course. Um, check out Rabbit Peach on Instagram, um, where they basically pretend Rabbit Peach is like some influencer, so she's always taking selfies, like you know, in the bath or whatever like that, like really sultry oh. selfies. Oh, uh, interesting stuff. Goodness. Yeah, pretty funny stuff. So, but yeah, love these games. Um, sad to see him go. Um, it'd be cool if he ended up working in Nintendo. Uh, that'd be cool to have like a, a little bit of the West infiltrate Nintendo in there. Um, but we'll see. Yeah. So, Gene, you're wondering about when it came out. Mm -hmm. The oh, uh, so Kingdom Battle came out August 29th, 2017. Yeah, launch year. There you go. So no wonder why it sold so well, you know, um, yeah, everyone bought that game. Everyone who had a switch, right? So. Right. Well, I think 
One of the interesting factors about this franchise to me is just that the first game, so Kingdom Battle, looking at this from Game Rant, uh, mm-hmm. amassed over 10 million sales over the past six and a half years. So Damn. huge seller, 10 million sales. And part of that, too, is that even though it is Nintendo and Ubisoft, it leaned more on the Ubisoft side in that it, it went on sale pretty fast. I yeah, think I bought my true. copy for thirty dollars in like later in 2017 Mm -hmm. maybe less than that so that was a big part of it but on the other side of things the sparks of hope game that came after i'm seeing here i want to say i i saw it a second ago that it only topped okay uh, as of january 2024 the game had only sold three million copies so quite a dip which mm-hmm. if you just think about the market of switch games at that point uh early on mario plus rabbits it is one of i'm trying to think what other mario games would have been out on switch at that point like mm-hmm. was odyssey even out yet no odyssey was no. Out, was not out yet odyssey came out that that winter um it, yeah. it was it was kind of it kind of ended in the year for the launch year right and and that's when it came out i think it came out in october but yeah it was still in the game of the year conversation because that was that was when everyone was like, "Oh my god, what's game of the year? Breath of the Wild or Super Mario Odyssey?" That's crazy, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. It was definitely so, yeah. launch though, but it hadn't come out yet, so that was the closest thing to like a like a new Mario game that we had for a while, you know? Right. Yeah, everyone bought that. Um, and yeah, not so many people bought Sparks of Hope, um, and I didn't finish it. There was a. It didn't feel that fresh to me. Uh, the, the story, the concept, the story concept of King of the Battle was cool. A little girl is in love with rabbits and uh and mario and she was working on a on a virtual reality headset that zapped both of them into a digital universe and that was the story that we got sparks of hope it just feels kind of like you know like oh my god we're in trouble again mario help you know mm-hmm. um the concept wasn't as strong um it, it definitely felt like a mario sequel in terms of you know just like more of the same you know but i, I you know this conversation is kind of inspiring me to get to get back to it. I I, I should I should have oh. finished it. So it was a yeah. good game. See, I wonder if I, I mean it's pure speculation, but with the follow up, I mean it, it scored very well. It got an eighty six out of a hundred mm-hmm. on um, Metacritic. So I wonder if there's just a well, we had our moment here with Mario Plus Rabbids, but mm-hmm. based on how this sequel did, maybe we're going to move on to something else. And yeah. so he said, eh, I'm good. I'm going to figure out a new path at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I would not be surprised if, if that was part of the story too. But, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know if, uh, if the, the Mario Rabbids uh, or the Mario XCOM uh, thing has, uh, has a path forward. I don't know. Yeah. It's such an unlikely it. crossover of, like, if you think of all the games that could get XCOM-style tactics games, Yep, here's Mario. It's like, dude, it's pretty sick, pretty cool. It was cool. It was it was cool to control Mario with guns, you know. And Luigi mm. had an awesome gun too. I forgot what it was, but you know. Micah, did you? Well, I I can't remember what you, whether you said yes or no when Gene asked. But what do you think about this? I know you are into tactical games like Fire Emblem, of course. Maybe this is maybe this is something you slept on. Perhaps, because I can't remember if the first game had a demo or if I just played it. Okay, because I, I know I did try it and I can remember if I tried the demo or if I like played it you know, at a friend's house or something. Um, I wasn't feeling it at the time. I am someone, though, who I was like anti rabbits back then. I don't know why. Maybe it's because oh it reminded me of like the Quiznos hamsters. You know, you know I'm talking <laughs> about those horrible little hamsters with the mouths like I don't know, but I like I did think Rabbit Peach was cute, but I remember just thinking like there's something about this that feels weird to me. And despite kind of liking the gameplay, it just I don't know. It was one of those games that felt almost just too silly for me to really get into. But I do. I, I love my tactical games. Um, like I haven't played it yet, but Persona 5 uh, Tactica, I, I still have that to get to. I think for me, when it comes to as much as I love certain gameplay styles, it does have to appeal to me in terms of the story and design. So you slap Persona on it 
hell yeah, I'm going to play almost, I played Persona 5 Strikers. I typically don't get into those type of games where there's like, you know, a flood of enemies, but for Persona, I'll play almost anything. And so even with games that I enjoy the formula, it was like, it just wasn't the right skin on it for me, I guess. But I would consider trying one of these again, uh, hearing Gene's praise of it, especially. Uh, But yeah, at the time that I tried it out, I remember just thinking, I kind of don't like the rabbits. They, they kind of freak me out. They're a little weird. Uh, and I'm a minions person wholeheartedly. So it's a bit hypocritical. But mm. oh, mm. yeah, I see that face. I'm a, Dustin, your son's going to get so much minion stuff from me. Oh, no. I love I love the minions. My dad loves the minions as well. I remember my mom like this was in like 2019 coming home with those kinder, you know, eggs. And they had like minions toys in them. And she's like, eat the candy, but, you know, save the toy for your dad. <laughs> because mm-hmm. it's like you collect those little minions. Uh, oh, we love the minions in our house. But no, this this game, I, I should give it another try at some point. And you're right, it is discounted. You go on Google World mm-hmm. now and these games aren't still $60 like every other uh, Switch launch title or maybe a $5 discount. They are cheaper to finally acquire. Yeah, it is nice. I, I'm still thinking I want to get both Luigi's Mansion two and three. I'm going to wait, but it's like, well, those are never going to go on sale. So no, <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, like, okay. Halloween maybe, but you know, maybe, but it'll be you 50 bucks. A so. couple bucks off. We had yeah. today our AC repair man was in the house for the summer maintenance check. Okay. Like he, he comes through twice a year just to make sure there's no problems. Just so we try to preventing it from just breaking out of nowhere. Right. Right. Um, and we had a $50 account credit because they had canceled our appointment twice due to like emergency calls that they got for other people. And we were fine with it. They gave us the credit. And the guy was like, oh, well, you can either use the credit today or save it for another time. And Colin was like, well, it's kind of his, you know, six and one half dozen in the other. And it, it is dozen, like waiting for something like Luigi's Mansion. It's like, oh, I mean, unless you can swing it where you get like a target buy two, get one free sale where they yeah. periodically do that for video games. And those are clutch. Those are really clutch. Like you're just to playing full price for those two games with getting one freebie. But otherwise, like Nintendo's not going to put this on sale. Maybe Halloween, like Gene said, you'll save a couple bucks. It's hard to know. Yeah. Well, so I, uh, I got to play the first one. I'm going to play all three. I don't know if I'm going to wait closer to Halloween, but I have the first one. I have it on GameCube. I'm ready to go. So I have time. But... So, yeah, uh, for our friend Davi Day, best of luck to you. Thank you for what you've done, because obviously so many people have enjoyed Mario Plus Rabbids. And we'll be watching closely to see what's next in your career. Yeah, it'll be Halo plus Rabbids. Master Dude. Chief, you know, the little rabbit with a helmet on, the needler. That'd be fantastic. Driving the warthog. Imagine a bunch of rabbits hopping into one of those vehicles, flipping it over. That'd be fun. I mean, you I, joke, but th- that's what Xbox fans have been asking for for like a long time. Not not necessarily a Rabbids uh, uh, game, but like fucking do anything with fucking Halo for fuck's sake, you know, <laughs> um, make make different types of games, you know, you idiots, you know, I like the idea of Halo Rabbids. But then you had me thinking about Rabbids with gears because I was oh, thinking about one of those better. fuckers getting chainsawed in half. Gears tactics. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so especially because Gears already has a silly side with some of the like modifiers you can put on during like horde mode. For example, mm-hmm. they have like the big head thing, or so everyone looks like a bobblehead. They have one where like it, in Gears Three, where you shoot people and instead of blood, like flowers come out of them. Oh, they yeah, they already yeah. or Halloween, you wear like a jack o' lantern on your head. They already do silly stuff like that. Yeah, I think it could, I think it could, it could happen. So we'll see. Uh, that that might be an Xbox. They need something. Here's yeah, your idea. Phil, 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 hear us loud and clear. Rabbids is the way to turn Xbox around. <sighs> Certainly. Uh, okay. Number two. Next one. I'm really, really excited about this one. Uh, it's a, a new Super Mario World Lego set has been revealed. Uh, I'm sure some of you have seen this already. I saw it on Twitter. It actually got leaked slightly before it was actually announced. But the set features a 2D mario riding yoshi but it has a couple extra very cool things first on the side there's a little crank you can move and it makes yoshi's little feet look like he's running it's very cute 
And then there's also a little lever on the back that makes Yoshi stick his tongue out. So he's ready to do any number of things uh, with that tongue. So this kit scheduled to come out October 1st. It's priced at one hundred and thirty dollars. So Lego, not for kids anymore, just for old people like us that have a little bit of money, hopefully. And uh, this set, I got to say, I'm not really into Lego anymore just because I would build them and I they look cool, but I didn't really like displaying them. I, I don't know. But when I saw this, I was like, man, this would look great on a shelf. I got to have this at some point. So I don't know. What do you guys think, Micah? What do you think about the tongue mechanics? <laughs> Yeah, I saw this set. Uh, I thought it was really cool. I do love the idea, like the little crank to move the feet, because anything that has like motion to it, especially will catch my eye. I'm just like a crow in that regard, right? Mm. Like you throw something shiny or like something moved, then, then I'm into it. Um, it would be like, okay, do you guys remember like grandparents or like great grandparents they'd have those little clocks on like a coffee table and it's like a glass dome and like the little gold things spinning around do you know what i'm talking about those like old timey so. clocks yeah. that was something that we'd always see at these old people my mom used to visit uh myrtle and jimmy uh, they died several years ago r.i.p but they had one of those clocks it was this like gold thing and it spun around i would just stare at it I would just sit and stare at that thing. And so I could picture this being our version of that. This is the millennial gold spinny clock is mm -hmm. this Yoshi. But now what you need, though, you got to set up some sort of rig so that the crank will turn on its own, get a little rotisserie set up on it, and then it'll just go and then you can just watch it zone out for a while. But I think it's a really cool set. I'm actually... I'm I'm not too mad at that price either for how big it is. Uh, seeing right. like this next to, it's funny to see the promotional images first of all because it's just like an adult woman like spinning the crank and looking like enthralled by it, and it's like that <laughs> would be me. But in the promotion, you make her seem a little weird. But I'm actually not too mad about that price. I think it's reasonable. You gave me an idea. Surely someone can do this. Someone with a lot more brains than me and skill. Could you turn this into a clock where maybe Mario is perched on a clock, but then you have it set up so it's like a cuckoo clock where at one o'clock Yoshi's tongue goes out one time, you know, and yeah. then at six, it's six times. And it does like a little, it does like the Mario, Super Mario World song and it's like bling, bling, you know, like Mario is Yoshi's tongue sound. That actually would be pretty sick. Someone should do that. It's certainly oh, possible. Could. You get a raspberry pie mm -hmm. and some other stuff in there. I mean, somebody could absolutely do that. Could I? No. <laughs> no. Yeah, me neither. In fact, I was looking at some of the like mechanisms that you have to build for this thing, and they make good guides on how to do it. I was like, oh, man, that looks that looks like a mess. It looks tough, but oh, we'll see. Yeah. I'm I think I probably will pick this up. I'm trying to not like buy a bunch of shit right before our baby comes just because I feel bad about it. But by the time October 1st comes around, your boy might be getting this. But Gene, I see a perfect spot uh, in the back of your set where you could put this thing and and have, you know, tongue Yoshi anytime you want. Really? Yeah, uh, well, I'm... This is when I when I realized, like you, that I'm not into Legos anymore. That, mm. that this is this doesn't excite me that much. I don't. Care. <laughs> this doesn't do anything for you. It doesn't do anything for me. So you know, and, and this is this is supposed to this is supposed to this is tailored for me. You know, someone with with with, with disposable income and likes toys and likes N Nintendo. But I think I'm good. I think I'm good on Lego. Good job, guys. Uh, you know. I have a uh, so confession and this isn't supposed to be judgmental. I don't mean it as a judgmental because I do plenty of things that are for kids. I mm -hmm. build, I have like little model kits that I build every once in a while, mm -hmm. watch anime. I do tons of things for little kids. Of course. Mm -hmm. The last time I built a Lego set, I was sitting there on my kitchen table with all these pieces spread out. I'm like, I'm 26 years old mm -hmm. <laughs> and something about it felt a little off which isn't normally the case for me. And again, there's some amazing Lego builders. It's not a judgment. I'm just saying how I yeah, felt. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. I was like, and now when this thing comes out, I'm going to be 31. It's like, well, I don't know. I guess I probably should just embrace it. But yeah. I don't know, something about it felt off. 
I I hear you. I've never built a proper Lego set, I realize. I've only ever played with Legos like at school. I've never built Legos to like to uh instruction manual or anything. I I mean, you know those Lord of the Rings sets. If I was to ever say, okay, no no holds barred, what am I gonna get? It it'd be that either Sauron's uh tower there, or it would be oh, the yeah. Rivendell set. Okay. That Rivendell but- set. Oh my yeah, God! The yeah, Rivendell I did, I did, set. I did go to the mall to look at the Tower of Sauron and said, uh, 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 "Like I just eyeballed it myself. Um, looks great. It's so I, cool. I get it. I get it. But yeah, I've never even built a Lego set like to to instructions before. I've only yeah, just played too. with them at school. So it's like I yeah. don't even know if I'd be into it. I love a nice puzzle though, like a jigsaw puzzle. Right. And watching yeah. those speed puzzlers on YouTube, Colin found the channel of like uh, world championship speed puzzlers that we started watching that one day. It's fantastic. They, they do a whole puzzle in like 20 minutes. It's crazy. Yeah. These but, are like puzzles to put together and yeah. I'm not really into puzzles either. Um, so that's fine. I was realizing, you know, I said that and I tried to preface saying that it's hypocritical, but I'm just like looking at the background of my shot of like my figures Mm-hmm. And I don't think there was any amount of prefacing I could do to make it not <laughs> sound hypocritical. So, uh, okay, this is a total side you, you, note. You, I, just, you just don't feel like building Legos. That's all. You know, like, like Micah, yeah. I've never done it outside of school. You know, I've never, I've even as a kid, I never sat down and was like, let me build this Lego shit. You know, like I've never right. done that. I always, I, I want Hasbro toys that are fully built so I can make like stories out of them i don't want to this is why i don't like minecraft or, or any games either i don't want to don't like, build disparage my minecraft in my it, presence well, I, get it, I get Whoa. it but you know uh but but you know obviously minecraft is the, the the biggest selling game of all time but it's a huge reason why i couldn't get into it because it's like i can't build my own fun you know um so which is why like when people are like oh i can't get into tears i get that too you know yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And I don't even play Minecraft right because I don't like building things. I just like going into caves and spelunking and fighting mm-hmm. monsters and looking for gold. And then I come back to my shitty house that I made out of dirt. It's just big enough for me to stand up in, basically. I, I don't build shit in Minecraft. I'm just going around should, in caves, man. It's awesome. You should play Dragon Quest Builders then because that's what Dragon oh, Quest yeah. Builders is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I own the second one and I okay, got a, yeah. it's, it's in the <clears throat> backlog. She's <clears throat> there. It was one it's, of my targets. Remember, back back to remember I, st- I started on this show and I'm just like, I, I, I haven't got back into it. So good reminder. <laughs> we should both we should both get into Dragon Quest. We builders. will. We're going to do that. Yeah. Micah, you and Holly should at some point do your own Minecraft server. You know, you can oh, have like yeah. no F words, no sw- Christian, like Christian ask mine, Minecraft <laughs> server, no swear words, um, you know, stuff, something like that. I could see a pretty wholesome time there. Absolutely. Uh, Oh, side note, uh, this is not relevant. You mentioned YouTube channels and I thought of something that I wanted to ask you about. I have a YouTube channel that I discovered that I wanted to recommend to Colin, but I don't know if he'll like it. And if I feel like I recommend it and he doesn't like it, I'm going to burn that. Like all my recommendations are done. Oh, yeah. I discovered yeah, yeah. a channel. His name's Steven Bridges. Mm-hmm. And he does. He knows how to card count at bla- at Blackjack. So he goes in and he has like a team and he wears disguises and goes into <laughs> casinos and counts cards. And he has like hidden cameras and has like the casino staff when they realize he's counting cards. Like there's like a little bit of drama in there where they tell him like, hey, you got to leave. Sometimes they won't cash him out. It's like this might be calling content. Oh, I'm going to write this down. Stephen Bridges. You know, they were, It'll come from me. I'll be like, hey, I heard of this channel. And oh, okay. then if he if he hates it, I did it. Yeah. I, I was addicted to watching these card counting videos over the last few days. This is the weird limbo I'm in with this baby. I'm just sitting around watching blackjack videos. I've never played blackjack at a casino in my life, but I don't know. These videos were, were hidden. So, so yeah, Super Mario World Lego set, October 1st, 130 bucks. Check it out. Maybe it'll be for you. So this next one here, Nintendo keychains. <laughs> This is why the show is not every week, <laughs> but I did actually, I would have wrote about this either way. Cause I do find this kind of cool. It looks so sick. there's new Nintendo keychains for sale at Nintendo stores in Japan. And I think also one of the two airports in, uh, in Tokyo and they're modeled after classic Nintendo controllers. So there's 12 of them in, to- in total. They feature buttons and joysticks from NES, Famicom, Super Nintendo, Nintendo 64, and GameCube. 
So the way you have to get these is that if you're at one of these stores in Japan only right now, uh, they're a random draw, like a gotcha machine. So if there's a particular one you want, it might be kind of expensive to get. But something that was found after these came out is that people got them and opened them up and found that they used actual OEM buttons and button pads inside. Cool. Yeah. So people realize like, hey, in <clears throat> theory, you could buy these and replace the buttons in your old controllers. I don't know about the joysticks, like maybe just the the stick part, but not obviously the the deep mechanical aspect. But these can be used. They use actual OEM Nintendo buttons uh, in them. So they're very cool. Now, if you want one of these, as I said, only in available, available in Japan right now, but you can look on eBay. The prices will horrify you. Uh, they're like <laughs> anywhere between $30, $60. Sometimes people have bunches of them, so you can buy a bunch at once. once but they're very expensive. I just thought these were so cool. I don't know if you guys saw them at all. If you're going to invest... The only thing I could think is that my luck, if I went to Japan again and bought one of these, one of the sets is the NES controller or the Super Famicom. And it's just the center <laughs> that has the start and select button. And I'm like, that's the that's the bum one. Like, no one wants that one. If you get that, you got to buy another. But mm -hmm. Gene, I, it sounded like you saw this pretty neat, pretty cool. Uh, I did not see it until just now, uh, but I am very, very disappointed that we can't buy them here. Um, I <laughs> might actually consider buying one of these one of these thirty dollars or maybe a hundred dollar packs or whatever from eBay. Um, I love these. I did not realize how cool they were looking. Um, in, I personally want the Super Nintendo or Super Famicom buttons. Um, yeah, and it'd be full, so cool to just have them in your in your pocket and just like being able to just press buttons like whenever you know like just for people for add uh who just can't keep still um you know it'd just be great to have like a nintendo 64 thumbstick and just being able to play around with it, that in your pocket instead of your dick or whatever yeah <laughs> you Gee, know just might be an upgrade in, in size for some of us yeah. but, oh you know. my god <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna say just bring like a wee nunchuck i'll cut the wire and just put a wee nunchuck. You just carry that around with you. That's the a new little fidget bit, spinner. Yeah, it's, it, it kind of is like like carrying a wee nunchuck. <laughs> well, the, the wee nunchuck is nice because it'll be. It's like it, it's 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 very uh, ergonomic to yeah. grip, right? I was gonna say, are you happy to see me, or you just got a wee nunchuck in your pocket? Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and also, you know what? This makes me wonder about. Um, you know how the Super Nintendo had convex and concave buttons? You know, the wide X would oh, yeah. cave in, right? Why the fuck don't we have that anymore? Why, why is every single button from the PS5 to the Xbox to the, to the Nintendo Pro Controller are all just buttons? They're just but, like upraised buttons. You know, I, I love, I miss the feeling of just being able to hold Y down. And you know, and like, oh, I'm definitely holding either Y or X because like, you know, my buttons, my, my thumb is indented into the button, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think that's the that's the one I want the most. Uh, either Super Famicom or Super Nintendo uh, buttons. Uh, those look great. Um, and either uh, any of the analog sticks would be fun. Would be fun too. I think. But those yeah. are definitely the ones. I, would I really like. like the the GameCube buttons. The GameCube one. is good too. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, GameCube buttons are. It's not. Well, I guess they're just completely different shapes. Yeah. which is totally unique now. But pretty cool, Micah. What do you think about these little gotcha toys? Holly and I love gotcha toys. We were a huge sucker for those in Japan. We bought tons of them, like a lot of them. Oh, yeah. I, as a kid, it was much more prevalent when we were kids, Dustin, for grocery stores to have like a little wall of vending machines. And it would be either little toys or, of course, candy, you know, runts and various things. But the little toys that you'd get, like those were usually the ones that were like 50 or 75 cents versus just a quarter. But I remember homies. Do you remember? Homies? I was just about to bring up homies. Like, what was that? Yeah. So they, and there was a whole little like YouTube documentary, actually, that Colin and I watched on that at some point of this guy who made a fortune on those. But when they stopped being popular, he like ended up losing all the money he invested, basically trying to revive it. Um, homies, for those who don't know, were these little action figures of like little little ghetto people essentially and they were huge you collected all of them but so like vending machines i adored as a kid and i my mom would always give me a quarter or 50 cents when we go like big y they had the best vending machines at big y 
Uh, so I'm, I'm into this, especially from the like, yeah, I can appreciate like blind box type things. You know, I, I'm not the person who's going to buy 20 of them because I have horrible luck and I think I'll end up getting the same one 20 times. But when people, for example, someone had sent me the Kirby um, Rement sets, which those are mm. blind boxes, but he bought just like mm. a, a full box of them. And so, you know, you're getting all one unique one of each. I do see, though, Walmart has they're not the same, but Walmart has Nintendo classic console keychain blind bags and they're oh. not the same, but they're pretty cool. They have Game Boys. There's a little GameCube controller, a little DS like these are pretty sweet little blind bags available at Walmart. So if you maybe don't want to take, you know, the eBay route uh, and you want just like a cool Nintendo controller, Walmart's got your back. Walmart. Walmart has you right now. I realize I do have one of my gotcha toys at my desk. Most of them are downstairs, but I have this this super meta. It's a one piece mini gotcha toy that I got <laughs> from a gotcha machine in Japan. I love and this. it has little toys inside and it should. I remember it. OK, it's not. I think one's stuck inside, <laughs> but it has these little devil fruit inside from one That's piece. Crazy. Wow. That's, you I can love put them it. in there. I need to re like the stickiness on the top of the sign. But yeah, it's my little mini. That's cool. Gotcha. Oh, I love, <clears throat> I mean, total sidetrack. I love miniatures and I always have. And I have told you before, Dustin, one of my favorite things as a kid was those I spy books. And oh, just, yeah. you know, and it's just a whole page full of knickknacks. And I would just get lost just staring at those pages because I love it. They had a little tiny unicorn, little tiny cars and shit. I love miniatures so much. It's a big part of my collection is like my little Kirby miniatures and all that. I'm so into this. I'm so into You know what, guys? Let's just buy them. Let's go to Japan. Company mm -hmm. expense. Dustin, you can get away for a couple of days, I'm sure. You don't, you don't have anything going on. Let's go to Japan. <laughs> go get some yeah. of these. We were talking about like how how old should he be before we take him like we could take him to Japan like how you know what I mean like you don't want to obviously I don't want to take a baby on any flight ever so that's too early but like if he can walk on his own why not why not so but yeah I, I certainly could get away for honestly a few weeks right now if you guys want uh, we yeah, can make yeah. that happen I don't think there's anything pressing going no. on in your life. Absolutely not. All right. This is a one that we don't have to talk about too much unless you guys have a particular uh, interest or something to say. Amiibo isn't dead. Uh, and that's actually the bigger story to me here is that Nintendo has announced two new sets of Splatoon Amiibo featuring Pearl and Marina. And is it Callie? Callie. Callie and Marie. Mm -hmm. This announcement is part of Splatoon 3's grand festival event that starts on September 13th. Splatoon is such a interesting IP in that it has splashes here when it comes out in the US, but it remains huge in Japan all the time. Mm -hmm. But I've been wondering if Nintendo has it's been done with Amiibo in that some of the last big releases, we haven't gotten anything. It feels like a shame we don't have a Luigi Amiibo with his backpack from uh Luigi's Mansion. That just yeah. feels like an obvious one to make, but yeah. they didn't make or like, you know, Paper Mario Amiibo, any any of these. They just seemed like it was kind of forgotten about. But here we have two new sets. So if you're interested in those, uh, these come out closer to the festival, which is in September. But I think you can pre-order them. Oh, right Paper now. Mario Amiibo would be so interesting. Just a really skinny Amiibo. <laughs> yeah, it would be like so the Game and Watch. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. I was even thinking, imagine if they did a set of the main cast from Mario RPG. Yeah. You know, that yeah, would Mello be and Gino. Exactly. Well, Gino, obviously, Gino would be such a tease, you know, if yeah. Gino was, was so desired in uh, Smash and, you know, did, Gino would just not be in the Smash lineup. No, no. Yeah. Um, yeah, I saw these uh, as a Splatoon fan. And as a fan of Pearl, Marie, Maria, Marina, Kelly, and Marie, I love all four characters, and I bought every single Amiibo featuring them. Uh, so I am tempted to get these. But then again, I do already have these characters. So yeah. That's you know, kind of where I'm at. Yeah. I, so I don't know if I want like a whole shelf full of just these girls. You know, um, I love them. I think they're cool. 
Um, but I don't know if I want to have just, you know, I, I, I don't know if I need that reputation. Yeah. <laughs> no, just having I, every single uh, Splatoon girl uh, as an amiibo, you know. Well, yeah, I have the I OG like Pearl and Marina set. And it's some of my favorite amiibo because I do. Mm-hmm. They're so funny. I, mm. I really like those character designs. They're really cool amiibo. Yeah. But seeing the new one, it's like orange is my favorite color. So I'm digging these outfits, but I don't think I need another Pearl and Marina set. I think I would have gotten it if I didn't already have it. But I'm not I'm not that level of collecting where I'm like, oh, I'll I'll definitely buy that. If it's all right, Vegeta Funko Pops, I'm gonna buy whatever they come out with. But this, I I already have it. It's mm-hmm. it's too much. Yeah, I have I mean, a, maybe I'll build up Splatoon 3. It's been over a year since I played that game. Um, and I loved it. There wasn't any reason other than, you know, I just moved on to other games. Um, so maybe I'll boot it up and see how I feel. But I do, uh, like you, Mike, I love the Pearl and Marina, uh, especially the, the, the aesthetic. They're so cool and they're so funny, you know. Um, being the, DJs and rappers and everything, you know. Who's the big guy? Uh, the uh, Ray? Is his name Ray? I guess, yeah. But he's not he's not there anymore. He's all about the girl now. Guy. Big man. That's his name. Oh, oh big mean, man. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, see? Don't even remember him. But. Yeah, big they had a big man amiibo and he was huge. Yeah, he was uh, huge. I, could, I th- that would not fit in my shell, so that's why I didn't, I didn't even bother getting him. So Yeah. Cool. Well, if you're interested in that, I think they're available for pre-order now or will be very soon. Last bit of news here. This one was a bit puzzling at this point in the, in the Switch's life. So let's talk about it. There's a new Joy-Con charging dock. And some of you may remember the original dock that would charge four Joy-Cons that came out at the launch of the Switch, but kind of faded away and wasn't available for sale anymore. In fact, if you wanted a dedicated Joy-Con charging dock, you mainly had to go third party. But now Nintendo has a new dock that charges two joy cons and basically the way it works is that this little dock sits on a stand and then you can plug in a USB-C cable to charge them up but at the same time you can remove it from the stand and kind of use this as a joy con grip but minus the grip part so you can use it as a controller while it's plugged into this thing if you want so this new dock it releases October 17th it doesn't have a price yet in the US, but the Japanese pre-order was, I think, $21 USD. So it's going to be around $20. But the main thing, as I mentioned earlier, that was puzzling me about this is that why are we releasing a new Joy-Con charging dock in the year of our Lord 2024? Switch shoes never coming out, man. It's a Switch forever, you know? I'm starting to wonder, dude. So... What do you guys, what, Gene, what do you think about this? It's a new charging dock. A lot of people don't necessarily have a use for this because they're just charging their Joy-Cons on the Switch itself. But I could see there's been times where I wish I had more Joy-Cons charged and I don't because I just have the ones plugged into my Switch. So I could see this being useful. But what do you think about it coming out this late in the game? I have no idea what's going on. Um I kind of wish that it was released earlier. I, I probably would have got it. I love not so much the charging aspect because, you know, uh, Scott DeWaz actually had a video about this about about uh, 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 in a couple of weeks ago about forgotten uh, Nintendo Switch accessories. And the first one he talked about was the Joy-Con grip charging grip. Yes. Where you can charge the Joy-Cons with, as you're playing the, playing the games. Um, and then you realize everyone, everyone realized, oh, I don't really fucking need this because <laughs> after I'm done with the joy cons, I just put it back on the switch and it's charging immediately and it's charging very fast. And without them, if you have the, 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 if you just use the joy con grip that comes with the system, which comes with every console, um, it works fine. And the, the, the joy cons last for 20 hours. So why are you just wandering around with joy cons for 20 hours uh, charge free? Right. Like when do when when does when does that scenario ever happen? Maybe you just have a big family, and you just have Joy Cons uh, everywhere. Then they don't, you know, like for for you, Dustin, you you, you and Holly might be playing, so you might want to have an extra set of Joy Cons around. I mostly like it for the fact that it can turn into a little flat controller. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of cool, and I'm wondering if that would be even kind of slightly more comfortable than the Joy Con grip, which feels weird, you know. 
because it just you're just kind of holding it like this and then playing. Whereas like maybe I can just hold like a tablet and play a video game. You know that could be fun. That could be interesting. Um, so I might check this out just to just just to be a collector um, and also to have a unique uh, Switch controller um, or, or just a unique way to hold the Joy Cons. Um, that could be fun, but. Otherwise, yeah, I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking with this. I don't know what they're thinking, like whether they're going to make a lot of money with this or what. No idea. This is definitely one of those Nintendo decisions, you know, mm-hmm. uh, that, that just kind of, kind of like, like don't, don't get it. Don't get it at all. Yeah, the I think that with the charging situation, I think myself included thought, oh, I why would I need a, a, a dedicated charger? The switch mm-hmm. charges it and early on in the switch it's like well it's mostly just me playing breath of the wild i don't need that now i've had a few instances where i know people are coming over later and we might want to play mario kart i have three sets of joy cons so i need to prepare earlier in the day it's like okay first i'm going to charge this set and then at this point uh i gotta swap them out and charge the second set and then the third set should be fine if they were already on my switch but I can see scenarios if you normally have multiplayer gaming going on in the house that you would want something like this ready to go. So, Micah, I'm guessing this probably wouldn't be something you would need as a primary handheld and pro controller user, correct? Right? Yeah, exactly. If I'm using the Switch it, uh, you know, for the TV, Pro Controller all the way. I just I love that controller. The Wii U Pro Controller was pretty decent. The Switch Pro Controller was an upgrade in every way and is honestly one of my favorite controllers. It's really well made. But I do see the value in this, especially for families, having multiple sets of Joy-Cons, playing things like Mario Kart, playing 1-2 Switch, God forbid. You know, I definitely see a value to this. What I hope and what we sort of discussed with the gang in the Discord was maybe this means that Joy-Cons won't be changing very much. Maybe this means that the next console will have controllers that are so similar these accessories may carry over. We had discussed some of the speculation in previous episodes about like the joy cons being magnetic instead of the way they kind of slide in now to the like rail system, basically. Uh, hopefully this means like dropping something like this so late, perhaps it would be usable to the next generation console. I don't have the highest hopes for that, but I at least hope that it means like, okay, maybe, maybe they will be similar enough that you can still use this. Maybe they are just saying, well, this is something people will want, you know, as we even sunset the system. Who knows? It is such a weird move to trot this out this late in the game. It's, I was talking to the AC repairman about the Switch, and he was saying he had never actually bought one. He wanted to play the new Zelda games, but he didn't actually buy a Switch. And he's like, now it feels too late. And I said, well... The next one is hopefully coming next year. The current one should drop in price or you hop on it for the next one. But it is funny, like, man, to just be waiting and waiting to see what they do next. And now this. What does this mean that you're still dropping new Switch accessories? I I can't fathom it. I like your point about potentially being able to use it on the next console, because I think about. So you have the GameCube and GameCube controllers kind of work on the Wii like the the OG launch we had the the ports for it you could play certain games with it and then your Wii controllers could work on Wii U so it does seem Nintendo has some history that the the next console can use the functionality of the old controllers to some degree so I could see that being a possibility where some of your old Joy-Cons can stick around, be used for certain things, but it all depends. I, that's, I mean, been our ongoing conversation. How different is the next Switch going to be? So maybe this is an indication that, sure, we're going to get Joy-Cons 2.0, but maybe they won't be quite as different uh, as we might think. If this old, you know, this charging dock could be an indicator of that. Yeah, but, you took that thought in an even better direction, Dustin, because perhaps the new Joy-Cons won't work with this dock, but if the existing Joy-Cons work for Switch 2, they're giving you a way to charge those controllers 
and you'll still use this. Maybe this dock you'll still use because the old controllers work on the new system, even if the new controllers don't work on the dock. It could be go either way. And either one right. is encouraging just to say that your investment in Joy-Cons, which aren't cheap, it'd be really nice to be able to carry those forward to the new system just because, you know, like those, some of the ones I have are like really new still, have a ton of life left in them. I don't want to just stop using them. I, I'd love to be able to bring those forward to the new Switch, you know, however that system works. We'll have to wait and see. We'll continue to wait as we have all of 2024 to see what the next Switch holds for us. Uh, the, the rumor right now on the streets is that the new Switch will be revealed as soon as I'm not on the show anymore. So... <laughs> We'll see what happens. Maybe you guys will have Brad to carry you along for that. But for now, this is what we got. All right, guys, this is the part of the show that I've been the most excited to talk about because there is many new things for us all to talk about. And that's what we've been playing. Micah, you, you seem pretty amped uh, to tell us some things about one of these games. So I'd love for you to kick us off. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to start with Pikmin 1 and 2. I mentioned on the last show I was playing Pikmin 1, had a great time with it, finished that. I ended up jumping right into Pikmin 2. I didn't expect to do that, but I was just in the mood for it. I said, you know what? I got the Pikmin fever. I got the Pikmin flu. I'm just going to keep rolling with it. I enjoyed Pikmin 2 a lot. It was impressive how many things they added just from game one to game two. They added new Pikmin types. They gave you a second person to control. They added the underground you know, sub-levels to explore. I feel like that is maybe the only misstep, though, is that they focus so much on the underground sub-levels. It takes away a little bit of the charm of what Pikmin feels like to me is when you're a kid and you're walking around and you find a marble on the ground, you find yourself a little hidden treasure because the treasures in Pikmin are typically not actually valuable items. It's maybe you found a marble or a, a shiny bottle cap or something. It's treasure to them, but it's everyday items. That's really the charm of it. it reminds me of those I Spy books in that same way. In Pikmin 2, they so heavily focus on these underground sublevels, and that's where like the majority of the treasure is. It doesn't feel the same. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel the same at all as walking around and just coming across treasure hidden in the grass. They correct that. I've already played Pikmin 3 and 4. They correct that in those games, I feel, because it's a much better mix of walking around and finding treasure and going to these underground levels. But Pikmin 2, in my opinion, just leans a little too heavily into that. It, it's just not, I don't know, it's just not as satisfying to me to essentially say you're going to go into this cave and you're guaranteed to find a bunch of treasure versus the feeling of walking through the forest and finding some random items, right? There's also, this is the basic premise of the game, not a spoiler. Uh, your company is in debt and you need to collect $10,000 worth of treasure to beat the game. Um, once you hit that $10,000, like the, the, roll, the credits roll and there is post game stuff. You can continue to explore if you'd like and collect more treasure. But in my opinion, they put so much treasure in the game that it's kind of unsatisfying to get that first ending. Maybe that's intentional because they want you to keep playing, but it feels like there is like double the amount of stuff you actually need to find. and. I was kind of getting sick of it by the end. Like, I feel perfectly content to walk away with what I've done. Perhaps I'll go back later and, you know, explore the remaining underground levels I didn't even see. But like, that's how much there is. There's so much content. I didn't even explore all of them. And I already beat the game technically. So that's the other thing is I feel like if they wanted you to really go through and do all this stuff, they should have made it $20,000 instead of 10,000 or like 15,000 because it just almost feels like I don't want to say they pulled a fast one on you they pulled a sneaky on you but they're like yay you beat the game and there's a bunch more to do but it doesn't feel like Grand Theft Auto you beat the game and there's a bunch more to do it's it almost feels right. like you didn't really beat it it feels like you didn't really beat it type deal uh I still highly recommend it Pikmin 1 and 2 that collection on Switch 
excellent, really well done. I had a great time seeing how the series started. These are like wholesome comfort food games that I sincerely enjoyed. But I do have just those like brief criticisms of two. I think three is my favorite. Now having played all four of them, three is my favorite. Mm. It was just a delight. I loved having three characters controlled, like for maximum efficiency. And I really think they had a much better balance of like the underground levels versus finding treasure, you know, in the on the surface world, basically. Uh, so that's my thoughts on Pikmin 1 and 2. I don't know if you guys have anything to say about that before I move to the other game. Polly started playing one after four, but it was too soon. She was like, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to do this right now. So, yeah, and one is really stressful because uh, one has a time limit. You have 30 days to find enough parts for Captain Olimar's ship or, you know, you lose the game. And like the one is feels really stressful too. that stress is gone. Like your boss is harping on you constantly like you got to help me out. I'm in debt. But there's no time limit. You, you could just dick around for a hundred days you're just still gonna keep playing until you get your ten thousand dollars one though going straight from four to one i could see that totally because it's a slightly different vibe the pikmin aren't as smart so it's a little more frustrating it's very different yeah these these pikmin they they had a glow up in their (laughs) intellect to some degree it seems but yeah No, they made them way smarter in the follow-up game, so it's much less frustrating in that regard. Like I had mentioned for Pikmin 1, you'll just, like, if I just walk across a bridge, half the Pikmin will walk around the bridge and just fall in the water and die. (laughs) They corrected that a lot, even just in Pikmin 2, even if it was kind of like a false correction of they added barriers on the side of the bridge, they did recognize that wasn't fair. Like, right. because you just could not get this group of Pikmin across the bridge. You had to break them into like very small groups. It was really annoying. Um, there was a lot of upgrades in Pikmin 2 in that regard. But yeah, Pikmin games, highly recommend uh, to all anyone who hasn't played those. Um, but the other game I've been playing that I am obsessed with now is the Oregon Trail. I bought the physical copy What happened was I was shopping for my best friend's birthday and I was trying to see if there were any Switch titles that I knew she didn't have that I thought she'd really jive with. She is similar to me, really into like management type games. She loved The Sims back in the day. And I saw that up for pre-order was the Oregon Trail physical edition. It came with these art cards, which is cool. came with like a little DLC. And so I ordered it and I ordered one for myself as well because I've never played real Oregon Trail I've only played uh, Fallout Boy Trail. I don't know if you remember that, Dustin. It was a promotional like Flash game back in the day. I think you had to help the boys get to a concert. It was on their website. It was Fallout Boy Trail. Wow. Um, that is the only this. one I ever played. Oh, it was fantastic. I'm looking at it now. <laughs> wow. And a, of course, Game Grumps played Oregon Trail, I think, or like Brutal Moose did. Somebody did, and I watched that. But this is my first time playing it, and it's so addicting like beyond addicting for someone like me who loves little management games who loves banner saga style having all these choices pop up randomly and what will you do and and really having to make some decisions are like split second decisions like you have to choose right now who's going to do this some of them they let you kind of mill over a bit i love that um there's two modes in the game there's all these like little side quests you can do but there's like it's kind of like Minecraft where there's like peaceful mode or enemy mode. You can play what's called nature trail and it's, it says for relaxation. So oh. you have more supplies and I think it prevents bad things from happening to you. It's like, just go down the trail, make some choices. Do you ford the river or not? Do you go hunting or not? And then you can play the normal style and have all the bad things happen. And the bad things that happen, I was laughing so hard, man. Like, it was just uh, like my party, uh, one guy, Shinji Nakamura, who's my black minister, um, and he just keeps getting hurt. So it started off first, he got hit by a wagon and I, I got him to town like he survived. I healed him, which cost like 45 bucks. And then what, like we leave. He fell down and broke his arm. And then like not long after he got hit by the wagon again <laughs> and he broke his leg and it was just like, oh, my God, like I was cracking up, though, because like my party 
is just so doing. Radagast isn't doing shit, by the way. All right. He's a banker. I only chose him because he had 50 bucks in his inventory and he isn't helping at all. Peebo, my hunter, he's doing his best. Umberto, the farmer, he's trying. But that fucking Radagast, man, like I can't believe this shit. He, I'm just so into it, man. It's the choices you can make. Uh, this is like the best podcast game. Because the game has a fantastic soundtrack. I was shocked. I thought it was going to be garbage, twangy, uh, you know, free source music, right? Like I was expecting like the worst of the worst. The soundtrack is actually really lovely, but this is just not a game you need to hear. So perfect for catching up on podcasts, perfect for catching up on shows. You're really not missing anything in the background. I'm having a blast playing this. I'm actually glad in a way that I never experienced it before just because it's so fresh to me uh, and, and the style of the game. Primarily, it's this kind of pixelated, you know, look to it. I don't love that when you go to a town and like you interact with like the shopkeep, it's kind of Fortnite looking like the characters. Um, but it's only those brief moments. The majority of the game, it's a nice pixely uh, art style and it looks great. So I, I'm loving it. Uh, pray for Shinji, please. He's not doing well. But yeah, the Oregon Trail, man, it's got its hooks in me. I have been thinking about it this whole time. I can't wait <laughs> to go play more. I'm curious about this version because growing up, my elementary school, we were we had the old computers up until second grade and then we got all new computers. So the original <laughs> computers grade, were what you were second grade. <laughs> When I wait, when I, when I, when I, what year was second grade? Oh, 2002. Wow. Yep. Well, <laughs> um, but the OG computers, they weren't Apple twos. They weren't that old, but they were some Macintosh computer from sometime in the nineties. So it had Oregon trail deluxe on it. So that's the version we grew up with, which most of the boys, when we would go to the computer lab, we'd load this up and do nothing but the hunting mini game and just just fucking murder bison like it was going yeah. out. Of, like just like we were eviscerating the bison population just through and through. But I always remember doing this and you had to cross the river. I was like, mm -hmm. OK, well, you can just run through it. You can try to make your your wagon like a little boat to like float across that never yeah. fuck that never fucking worked making the boat that thing was always sinking so i have a lot of good memories playing playing the well not the original but somewhere in the middle version of this game looking at this new one i'm surprised it looks like so it's like a mix where it has some characters that are are drawn right but mm -hmm. some of this has like a, a light octopath style in that it has these pixel characters with like really nice exactly. lighting it's kind of beautiful yeah. gonna say when you're when you're going down the trail that's all pixel art and everybody's going to be pixely right and your little character avatars are down at the bottom they're kind of Fortnite looking um and so when the, like when you're going down the trail that's what you see is the pixel art and then it's when you actually get to a fort That'll also be pixel art. But when you enter the store, for example, that's when it has like the rendering of the guy and it, it's a little the colors are dialed up a bit more. Um, and I'm not anti Fortnite. I'm just saying like that's the art style. It yeah. looks like Fortnite avatars. Right. And so I'm glad that's not the whole game because it is. It's really nice to look at this charming little pixel art, you know, trot your wagon trotting down or uh Poor Shinji. He's just always in pain. So he's always like doubled over when he's walking. Like he's never having a good time. But I thought I, I, I thought I would enjoy this because I love management games. But I, I knew Oregon Trail is primarily like an educational kids game. I didn't know I'd have this much fun with it. I didn't know how wacky it would be. There are some genuinely funny moments besides my party getting you know hit by the wagon. There's some other like just really funny stuff in here that... I don't know. I'm I'm so surprised how much I love it. And I'm already looking forward to like subsequent playthroughs. The game lets you skip ahead a bit. You know, once you get to a fort the first time from then forward, if you do another playthrough, you can hire a guide to get you that far. So you don't have to play mm. the whole thing over again. Right. I just am really into this and I can see myself playing this through just periodically. Um, I was like, oh, this weekend, I don't really have anything I want to play. Let's do a run of Oregon Trail. And 
they have little like community online events of like trying to fish for certain fish in this little mini game and just random stuff. There's all these different specific missions you can do. This one came with the Cowboys and Critters DLC, it was called. It's just, it's really got me. It's really fucking got me, man. Like, I, I, and I didn't realize how attached I'd get to my party. Like, I, you know, I named them quickly. I got right into it. And man, when I thought I was going to lose Shinji, I was like, holy shit, man. Like, I was getting real emotional about it. But it, I'm so, in, I'm so invested. I can't believe I'm so invested, but I'm having a blast. I'm just loving it. Just a, a quick tip. You, uh, you won't know this. Gene does, though, that if Shinji keep him away from any characters that are unconscious. Um, <laughs> just you, saying. You, you uh, is this Evangelion? Yeah. Do you get that reference? <laughs> just uh, uh, just keep him away. Yeah. Just keep him away. You can look well, that up later. I was so naming. So <laughs> I'm naming the characters, right? And I got Peebo, Radagast, Umberto. And I, w- I knew I wanted to name him Shinji. And I don't know why Nakamura just popped into my head. And then I was like, why do I know that name? And he's a famous soccer player. And I was like, oh, there it is. But I, I kept it because I was game. like, is that the name of the guy from Naruto? It's not. No, it's, it's, a, it's, <laughs> it's a, a real it's man. Evangelion. It's he is the he is the boy. He is the archetype boy. <laughs> yeah, this sounds fun. It sounds like a game Holly would really like. As well. I think so. Uh, it was 40 bucks for the physical edition. I got it on Amazon. I, I think you would like this, like Holly especially. And it's, you can just pick it up and put it down anytime. Like at any moment, you can just hit main menu, quit, and it saves. It that To me, that seems like the ideal game for someone with a child. You could play for literally two minutes and save your game. You don't have to worry about getting to the next save point. You can just put it down of course, the switch just goes to sleep anyways, but like yeah. being able to actually save and make sure you don't lose hours of progress, like that is made for people with kids that you can just go right to the main menu, save whenever you want. There's no boss battles aside from crossing the river. Uh, I, I think Holly would like this. Dustin, put this on Holly's Christmas list because I think she would love it. Yeah. Yeah. Right now, she uh, she's just playing Mother 3 on my analog pocket and... Mm. She keeps telling me things about this game and it's fucking nuts. It's a fever dream. <laughs> Everything she tells me, she's like, oh, yeah, there's this dog who's dressed as a man right now. Kind of like uh, Red 13 in Final Fantasy. Man, I need to play Mother yeah. 3, too. That's a no, huge, she, that's a huge she sent me a picture and she was like, Mr. T is here and he's helping yeah. me. And I, and I was just like, what the fuck is, is going this, on? This, this, she was an Earthbound 2, I think. But yeah, yeah she, oh, she yeah. was like, oh. She goes there. There's a guy here, and he's in a hot tub, and he gave a kid some some sort of mushroom or something. I'm just like, what is going on around here? It's it's nuts. I don't know. I was like, what is this? I, I'm loving her updates on it, though. Yeah, she's having a good time. She's pretty. I didn't know how. Like she she liked Earthbound slash Mother Two quite a bit, so I knew she would like this, but she. Especially right now where she doesn't have anything to do other than sit around and wait for a baby to pop out. She's she's into Mother 3 right now. But oh my cool. God, you sold me on Oregon Trail. Uh, I, I, as you were talking, I just ordered on Amazon. Should be getting, uh, yeah. getting, I should be getting the physical cartridge on a Switch tomorrow. The, the deluxe I, edition. Whoa. I mean, I feel crazy, but I'm temp- I think my sister would also really like it. She doesn't listen to this, so she won't know. Uh, I was, I, I'm tempted to order one for her for Christmas because I think she has a Switch Lite. I think she would have a lot of fun with this too. So I'm like, oh man, I'm already going to be buying like three copies of this game. Yeah. But I'm tempted. As the, only, as the only person here who did play the original Oregon Trail on Macintosh back in the day, went second grade in my day, <laughs> which was 1988. <laughs> uh 1988 1989 uh yeah but it was the same thing at the computer lab uh it yep. was where I, it was where i learned how to type uh and oregon trail was one of the the games that learned that that taught me how to type um i do remember pl- mostly playing the hunting uh, i barely remember much else of the game but i am sold i've always been interested in oregon trail um whenever i did hunting in red dead redemption 2 i was like man if we've sure come a long way since Oregon Trail. <laughs> that's that's what I was as, as I was skating the bison in the in in the uh in the old Red Dead Redemption one map in Red Dead Redemption Red Dead Redemption two. 
you know, uh, when 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 the characters are just kind of chilling, right, and and just being at the farm, and I was just like, man, this is just like Oregon Trail, um, just maximize and rock star. So uh, yeah, uh, I, I looked at the graphics. You're right; it kind of looks HD two D. Mm-hmm. You know, really cool looking. So I am I'm very interested. I can't wait. I'm gonna I'm gonna start it right away. Oh hell yeah! I'll mention too because Colin pointed this out as someone who played the original game. Yeah. In this one, you pick your full party. He had told me that in the original, you just pick yourself. Like, are you a banker? Are you whatever? And that's kind of your difficulty level of like which skills you have. Man. And this one lets you pick the party. So you like you have four characters and you pick one from this list and then it gives you four more characters. You pick one from that list and you keep going till you have your full party. It tells you they're kind of like their skill, their personality, uh, you know, and they each come with an item that they have. So Colin told me it was different in that way. I really like that. Uh, I thought it was a really cool way to build the party and you don't have total control over it because you have like random roles basically of who it's going to give you. But it felt like a little more control than the original, which for me as a total beginner was helpful. Gene it says here you're going back to one of the all time greats, one of the all time classics. Yeah. Tell me about it. I am playing Dark Souls on a Switch. Um, and I mentioned this on Seven Sign. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, it's, been, it's, it's been quiet lately, right? It's a quiet summer. Um, after Shadow of the Earth Tree, there's, there's not a lot of releases. And uh, I don't know. Just a- every year, I just want to play Dark Souls again, right? Um, and I don't, I, don't, I don't know why the audience keeps questioning me on this. This is the original Dark Souls. This is a fact. This is not, this is not an opinion. Uh, this is the, the original Dark Souls, the dark version of Dark Souls. Um, if you played Dark Souls Remastered on PC, PS4, Xbox, or PC, you are playing not the original Dark Souls. You are playing brightly lit souls. Mm. That's what you're playing. All the lighting is fucked up. Uh, all the bloom is fucked up. This isn't this isn't like some new fact or anything like that. Crobcat and I'm pronouncing the the the, 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 the creator's name right. Crobcat had a video that has like 1.7 million views that shows the difference between the original Dark Souls and the remastered, and shows how messed up it is. All the fire, the, the fire and the lighting effects look, look messed up. The the armor uh, loses all of his uh, dents and cracks. But the original Dark Souls, which is only on the Switch in the modern in the modern day. Uh, unless you bought the Prepare to Die edition on PC back in the day, that's delisted. This is the only way you can play the original version. Xbox 360 store is down now. You could have bought the original Xbox 360 store uh, uh, Dark Souls, and that was the original one. But the Switch remaster version is not the same remaster that on PS4 and Xbox. It is the Prepare to Die edition. This is not something, again, this is not something that you can argue with. This is a fact. This is something that all... Uh, Dark Souls modders understand, which is why they're they're trying to recreate the Prepare to Die edition, which is basically on the Switch. And it is a 30 frames per second experience, except I did manage to make it kind of break down in Blight Town. There is a corner of Blight Town where the game kind of sinks into like 15 to 20 again. Really, it's just a corner where where, where you you have to collect, um, I think, the Poison Mist uh, uh, spell. And I only uh, uh, remember that because I did that last night. Uh, but yeah, having a lot of fun playing, replaying on the Switch. Uh, d- discovered recently that the, the, the one thing shitty about the, the Switch version is that it does not support cloud saves. Mm-hmm. So if you want to play uh, Switch on a console and you're like, oh, well, maybe I could play on with Switch Lite, and which is what I wanted to do. Um, I realized that I could not transfer my save over. So... You know, that's one thing to be wary about, but uh, otherwise, uh, it's a great, great uh, version of the game. I've, had, I've been having so much fun. Um, I uh, am basically at the end of the game again. Uh, uh, got all the four souls, and I'm basically, I, I literally had to kill in the, fire, the, kill in the first flame, the, the, the final boss of the game. And just had a great time. I'm level 175, actually. Actually, uh, if you guys don't know, the, the best soul farming, the best experience farm in the game is in the painted world um, where you kill the phalanx all over and over and over again. And that's about a cool eight, eight to nine thousand uh, souls. 
every 30 seconds. Uh, so, you know, great podcast uh, game to, to experience through. I was actually on the phone with, with a good friend of mine for six hours. And all I did was just grind through the painted world, uh, the painted world phalanxes over and over again to make myself super buff, super strong. And I don't know, I hit all the, I hit all the soft caps of every single, basically every single stat, except for resistance, which is useless, of course. But yeah, Dark Souls Switch, um, highly recommended, especially if you feel like playing Dark Souls again. And if you've never played the original one and you're curious and you're wondering what you're missing out, because the remastered version, not the best version in, in, in my, in my, in my uh, opinion. If you really care about frame, frame rate, and that's fair, uh, then yes, of course, the remastered version is just fine. Uh, but I am thinking about doing, uh, I, I've been wanting to stream more. And, you know, why, not I, why don't I just actually finally beat Dark Souls Remastered, the one everyone else played um, on PC. So I might just do that uh, sooner or later once I start being busy. But Yeah, I wonder. So I did you, played. Yeah, did you play Remastered only? I played the first time I played it and never finished it was the 360 version. Mm. And then I bought the 360 version digitally. Mm. Uh, so I don't I don't know if I can load up that on a Series X. I so I've already bought it. So it's even though the store's down, I should have the license for it. You but I don't be know. Able to download it. Yeah. Still. Yeah. And then when I actually played it and beat it, I played the remastered version on mm. PlayStation 4. So mm. So I have a, a little bit of experience with the OG, but I saw your screenshots and it's like, yeah, it's definitely not the same. Certainly. Yeah. Huge, huge difference. Massive difference. The fire looks different. Uh, the, the beginning armor looks different. You know, you don't you don't see the cracks in the armor like you do in the original, you know, crazy. Yeah, that actually you made me wonder. I think I still. They delisted the prepare to die. They did. Oh, I still have it. I still have it in my Steam nice. library. I have the there you prepare go. to die. There you edition. go. Just play that version then. Screw it. There that's, we go. That's, that's, frame. that's the best version, right? Yeah. That's easily the best version. So Okay, good. That's yeah. good to know that I have dude. that. So. Yeah. Dude, I wonder what, uh, what that looks like on the Steam Deck. You're so lucky. I'm so mad I didn't buy it, uh, I didn't buy it on PC back in the day. Isn't, there, isn't this version kind of fucked, though, at the same time? A little it's bit. Like... A little bit. <laughs> but, you know. From software, do something. To yeah. try to preserve your games properly, well, please. Well, that, that uh, well, that's why the new remaster version kind of sucks too, because it, it right. keeps a lot of old bugs too, and you know it's Q lock, you know, and Q lock didn't do a great job. So, yeah. yeah. Well, Dark Souls sounds cool, but yeah. Gene, this other game you have a I don't know, it's not really a scoop because a lot of people got to check this out, but mm -hmm. I'm excited to hear from you firsthand about Star Wars Outlaws. Yeah, embargo lifted today on the final preview for Star Wars Outlaws. Not a Switch game, of course, only on PS5, PC. But I did play about two and a half hours about of it uh, on Discord uh, via cloud, cloud stream, which was surprisingly good. Uh, it was so immersive that I actually forgot that I was playing it through cloud. Um, and it, the game was so good that I forgot that I didn't have the game. So when I went to work and I came back, I was like, man, I'm really excited to play more Star Wars Outlaws. Wait, I don't have the game at all. I guess I'll just play Dark Souls Remastered, and that's and that's what and, and that's what led to it because it's like, oh, I yeah. don't have anything cool, cool on you to play. But Star Wars Outlaws, I was really, really shocked. It's it's just a Ubisoft open world game. I think that's what Star Wars needed. I think we we and, and Ryan McCaffrey uh, points out in IGN, and I also point out in my, in, in my story, we've never actually had a seamless Star Wars open world game before, at least not single player. You know, of course, there is the MMOs, right? Uh, Over Republic and, and whatnot. But um, there's never been a, a highly detailed, high fidelity Star Wars uh, uh, digital experience that is just completely seamless. And as I was playing, I was like, man, I really, feel, really, really feel like I'm walking into this Star Wars town. It really, really feels cool. I'm walking into these buildings. That's really immersive. I'm hearing all the jazz music and, 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 the, and, the, and the sounds of the bar and the chatter. All that is really, really working on me. Um, the controls feel great. The speeder bike feels so cool. Uh, you can upgrade the speeder bike. Um, I'm really looking forward to, do, to making that look cool. Uh, Kay Vest, the main character, she looks cool. She has cool costumes. Uh, you can upgrade her blaster. I wonder what else she can do. Um, everyone made fun of the IGN gameplay video. Uh, I, I watched it. It did not look good. 
I think it might be a, a, one of those circumstances where the player was not really demonstrating the game in the best light. And I, I don't mean to make fun of games journalists uh, uh, play, play, performing or whatever like that. I just think that it's just one of those times where the, the, this player was not performing or doing the most interesting things or really playing in a way that, that would make the game look interesting. Um, but also some people were claiming, complaining about the animations, how it looks janky. Reminder, this is an open world game. This is this is a there are five huge maps that seamlessly go in between space travel. Well, it's it's obviously a loading screen when you when you travel into space, but they do do that level of immersion that everybody wanted in Starfield. Why can't you have a loading screen uh, going through the atmosphere? That's exactly what Star Wars Outlaws does, and it's actually kind of cool. Um, but this is an open world game, so of course the animations are 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 going to look a little janky. So this isn't going to be the Last of Us Part Two level, which is crazy, which goes to show how much the Last of Us Part Two uh, had going on in terms of animation and everything. But um, yeah, this is an open open world game, so th- th- there's a lot going on, and it's very very impressive once you realize that it is all open world, it is all seamless, that you can go in and out of buildings at any time, um, and that there are so many different characters to actually talk to and engage with, and uh, the side quests. There there are faction side quests. Uh, when you betray a gang, the gang will hate you and, and they'll attack you. We haven't seen this shit since Grand Theft Auto San Andreas and Saints Road 2. I don't know why most open world games could, haven't continued that. I get that it's hard to do. I get that it's weird to do. I get that it's complicated. But it's but why are we making our games simpler? <laughs> I don't know. I don't get why the video games are becoming more simple in terms of the formula, right? Um. So it's nice to have an open world game where, where there are actual faction uh, dynamics that have consequences. And I'm really excited to see how that plays out. Um, the physics are good. The, uh, the, the dialogue trees are good. Uh, Kate, the story is, you know, uh, uh, it, it really does feel like it's starting from the bottom. There, there's really, really low, low stakes. There's no like, oh my God, the galaxy is in trouble or whatever like that. It's just like, here's Kay. She's, she, she, she's trying to figure things out. She's poor, you know. Uh, and she's and she's gonna make her way around, and you're gonna join her. And she's got a shitty little ship that you're gonna upgrade too. You can upgrade the ship too. You can walk around the ship. It's really cool. Nice. I'm super surprised that I like Star Wars, the, the the open world Star Wars Ubisoft game. But that's what's happening. Yeah, and this comes out August thirty thirtieth. Yeah. And is that the three day early access day or the actual day? Uh, no. I can't tell from their website. <laughs> I, who, who knows? Who, who knows? <laughs> yeah, I am curious about this. Um, I think this might be a game that. So I don't know if I mentioned on this show, but my computer has been very annoying and keeps turning off, and mm. so it's like kind of broken. I've done mm. a million things to try to fix it. I'm at the point where I have to start testing out new parts, and so I said, "Fuck it," and I ordered a brand new PC. Uh, that's not here yet, but. This sounds like one, you know, on an RTX 4090 mm. might be pretty, pretty nice. So mm. maybe I'll check that out because I know they have that subscription. You can get access to it for 18 bucks oh, uh, yeah. a month. D- Dustin and his uh, subscription bouncing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Subscription. I'm dude with the PC game with PC games. I subscription bounce all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I could I could do two months, a month or two of the. Uh, this Ubisoft service and and check this out, but check it, it out. sounds check it, out. it sounds cool. Um, Fucking I'm, good. I, I I did not expect it. I fucking uh, as, as as our listeners know, I fucking hate Star Wars now. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm right there with Colin, and we can't shut the fuck up about how much how much Star Wars has disappointed us. But Julian Garrity, the the director of the division, told me that in in my interview, in my piece today, go check it out on WashingtonPost.com. Uh, that uh, that uh, he really wanted to get back to the, the what he remembers, what he what he loved about Star Wars, and this was before the internet, before the streaming service, before the TV shows. When you pop in that VHS tape, you know uh, what's what's that feeling? When you're playing with the, the Kenner toys, what's that feeling? You know, and I've, I'm, I I'm I'm happy to report that they got the feeling right. I, I it, it reminds me of when I, when I when I was a kid again and I liked Star Wars and Star Wars was full of exciting possibility, you know. Um and yes, I played the Star Wars Jedi games by, by Respawn. Yes, I think they're really really great. I've always said that Jedi Fallen Order is one of my favorite games. Does not really really make me fall in love with the Star Wars universe though. I think they're cool laser sword games. 
right. right? And they're not seamless open world. I really think that the difference is the the fact that I can just walk, like I, I can speed bike up to a, a Tatooine town and just park my, bar, my, my bike there and just go up to shop and people there and just talk to them and just go into the shop and bar. I think that actually matters. The, the, the Star Wars Jedi games, there is no there, there are no signs of life like that. You don't hang out in the Star Wars Jedi games. You can hang out in Star Wars Outlaws. You can this is you can play this like a real true immersive RPG experience and it'll be a lot of fun. Can you like GTA style just walk into a bar, start killing everybody and then have like the empire chase you down? I did not do that. I did not do that. I'm not sure okay. if uh, uh, I wish I, I, I wish I was that kind of player, but I did not because I only had two hours. I really wanted to like like do the missions right. like, properly um, and play the game properly. Um, I want. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if there's some wanted system or anything that where, where you can just pull your gun. I literally didn't didn't try. I'm sorry. I, I'm I'm not that kind of player where I just right. pull my gun out into into, into social play social social situations. Um, Hitman, You're not I a would. psychopath. Hitman. Like, I, I, I'm just, I want to know if you, that's my thing in games sometimes where I don't necessarily want to go on a killing spree, but I want to know if you can. Mm -hmm. It's like, I always wonder, this is the most sadistic. When there's like an animal, I'm like, can I, can I slice it with my sword? For example, mm -hmm. in Kanitsugami, I was like, well, there's a, can I kill it? Which mm -hmm. you can cure them, but you cannot kill the animal. I'm like, okay, well, that's good. Cause sometimes that's like a bad thought where it's like, oh, can I punch this animal? And then you're like, okay, well, I'll try it. And then you do, and you're like, fuck, why did I do that? Uh, it's like when you yeah. punch the fucking goats in Metal Gear Solid Five, like, and, <laughs> yeah. and then it does that bionic commando like, like sound, like. Yep. Yeah. You gotta, um, you gotta test it out though. I, I, I get it, Dustin, because because it adds a sense of like danger and realism to 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 the to the to the to the, to the circumstances, right? So yeah, you know, so so yeah, I am a little disappointed that I didn't get to uh, fuck around and and try. How much of a scoundrel K Vess can be? Can she be a murderous school shooting, mass shooting bitch? You know? Um I do that in Hitman. And I and I talked about it in some saying where I do I, I go on mass shooting sprees in Hitman. Very satisfying. Yeah. But it, I, 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 but remember remember, this is a Disney game. So I don't think yeah, I can go around you can go around and just shoot, you know, little little baby aliens all day. So and I you do have a little baby alien sidekick with you. Um, and oh, yeah. that's very, that's a very useful, it's basically like, you know, um, like it's, it's a tool, like you can distract enemies with them or you can send, send, send them off to, you know, hit a button or something, you know? I saw a clip the other day of speaking of open world stuff of Red Dead Redemption, where <laughs> Red Dead Redemption 2, where like, there's a guy, it's like this, like, hick redneck guy and he's like he's got like he's a big boy and he's got overalls on and he's got no shirt under and he's with his wife so he has arthur just throw an axe in his wife's face and he's like <laughs> no she meant everything to me and he starts like chasing after you and he will not stop chasing you mm -hmm. and then he just had him like run all over the map and then eventually get run over by a train oh <laughs> and uh yeah. it's like i appreciate that you can do this yeah, that's oh, that, that's yeah. that's the rock star difference, right? If there's right. any, uh, it, it, so that's why I like. I'm glad that the Star Wars open world is in the hands of a of a. You know, we all make fun of Ubisoft open worlds, right? But let's be real, they're they're also one of the masters of making open worlds. Uh, uh, the only reason why their their games feel so stale is because everyone fucking copies them, right? Um, and so really, I think it's either Rockstar or Ubisoft, uh, that, that I want to want them to make an open world and it's good that it's Ubisoft and it's good that it's massive entertainment. I love massive entertainment. I love the division games. So cool. Well, as for me, I actually have two Nintendo games to talk about today. One mm -hmm. of them, I've gone back to Mario golf. I mentioned playing everybody's golf earlier in the show with Holly, but we decided, you know what? We've playing everybody's golf. We barely played Mario Golf. Uh, this is, what is it called for Switch? Mario Golf Super something. Super Rush. So yeah, this is the, the most recent Mario Golf game. And we played a few rounds on this and it's okay. It's actually just as okay as I remembered in that it's an unfair thing to say, but when you go from playing everybody's golf to playing this, it's just kind of disappointing. I will say the character lineup is super cool and that you can golf as like if you want to be a uh, wiggler, you can. And he has like a special move where he gets mad like like he does in, you know, a standard Mario game. 
I like to play a shy guy, of course. So we've been playing a little bit of that, but I think we're going back to everybody's golf as far as our, our go to game for for like a arcade style golf. But I was glad we got to play a little bit of it again uh, just to see. And man, I'm looking, man, IGN gave that game a six out of ten rough. I don't know if it's that bad, but hmm. The other game that I'm very excited to talk about is Nintendo World Championship NES Edition. Yeah. This is Nintendo's current new release. And Gene, you had talked about last week or last episode, the special edition that you were going to unbox. Uh, Man, that special edition is nice. It is nice. It comes with the the pins, which are really cool. It comes with some nice art cards of the different covers of the games. Overall, just a really nice package from Nintendo as far as like a special comes edition. A little, comes with a little stand in for the gold cartridge too, which I missed on, the, on my unboxing, but it was at the bottom of the box and you can actually hook the cart, the gold cartridge onto a little Nintendo, clear Nintendo stand. Very, very fancy. Very cool. Yeah, very fancy. Pretty good value, I would say too, because the game is normally 30 mm-hmm. and the physical edition, I don't even know if you can still get it, is 60. So 30 mm-hmm. bucks, the extras you get, pretty nice. As far as the game itself, uh, I've actually been playing it quite extensively. So Mm. the primary modes, there's like a standard speed run mode where you just do all of the challenges Mm -hmm. that the game has in it. Mm -hmm. Then there's two online modes where you are either doing like an elimination round, playing against ghosts of other players, trying to be the last player standing or there's just a straight up tournament mode where you submit your best scores from a set of uh, different challenges that are selected mm-hmm. on a weekly basis. But what I'm finding as I'm mostly just playing the, the speed run mode is that there are certain NES games that I did not really play growing up that I'm discovering, which has been cool and also very annoying, specifically Ice Climbers. Ice climbers can fuck off. I hate this game. And I did all the challenges. My my rank is that I have to get an A tier in order to move on. So I've gotten an A tier on all the ice climbers challenges, but uh, it sucks. I hate your character barely moves left and right when when you jump. I don't I don't get the appeal. Some other games, though, that I've been enjoying doing the challenges are like Kid Icarus. Barely played. We never had Kid Icarus growing up, so. Mm. The last challenge is really tough. I haven't done it yet where you have to play a large portion of a level to do it. So that's been kind of cool. I love the escalation of the different challenges in that. So the first set, like the first game that you can play is, of course, Mario Brothers, the OG, where the first challenge is get the mushroom on level one one. And that's it. It's all you got to do as fast as possible. The final challenge of all the Super Mario Brothers levels is beat the entire game uh, with warps. Mm -hmm. So that one is more of an endurance. I think it took me. I want to say like eight minutes or something. Mm -hmm. Now, it's not as hard as just beating the game normally, because if you die or whatever, it just rewinds you back to the point that you were and you can keep going. But it adds to your time, of course. So, yeah, I've been going through and doing these challenges Getting the S rank on some of these is very, very tough. I don't even know how it's even physically possible on Mm -hmm. some of these. It's fun, too, because you can go at the end of each week and review the highest scores in some of the competitive modes, and you can watch how they did it. This is some crazy shit. And always, dude, when you see these crazy ones, it's always a Japanese name. These Japanese players, they're on a next level where they're doing like, I'm sure speedrunners know about this. On the Super Mario levels, they do like a jump backwards at the very beginning to instantly gain momentum. And they're dude, it's insane to just go and watch (laughs) some of these runs. I don't know how they're possible, but it's cool. You go around, you have to collect all these different pins, which is why the special edition comes with the physical pins. So I'm trying to get all of those. You get a pin when you get an A rank or above in each level. So that's my barrier for now. Gene, I think you mentioned this when we talked about this last episode, but the biggest omission Mm -hmm. from this game is that it does not have friend leaderboards. Yeah, it's insane. Mario Odd, not yeah, Mario Odyssey had friend leaderboards for its time challenges, Mm -hmm. so you could at least compete against the people you knew to try to like be the top amongst your friends. 
Mm-hmm. This game doesn't have that. It seems yeah. it's shocking to me yeah. that it doesn't have it. Cause I'm, I, I, you were playing it a bit, right? Gene, I was like, I want to see what Gene's times were no. and if I can beat his times, because that would be so much more meaningful to me than mm-hmm. ranking amongst people. Also my age. Oh my God. I'm so much worse than, yeah. That then people at birth, my age or these yeah. Japanese kids at my age, or whatever like that, you know, these 42 year old Japanese dudes, you know, Jesus. Um, yeah, and if someone in the comments was like, Gene, why do you keep saying there's no leaderboards? Yeah, there's no friend leaderboards. That's what matters, you know? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, there's nothing it, else to say. I don't know. It, it's a very very sparse, sparse, sparse game. There's not a lot there, you know? Right. There are like, some other weird nitpicks about it is that when you play the, so the, like, the solo speedrun mode, it has your screen of what you're currently playing on the left, and then it will have your your best time. So you can kind of mm-hmm. keep gauge if you're trying to beat it. I'm like, I'm when I've been playing, I think I kind of don't need the ghost screen to be as big as my screen. Yeah. Like just make my it's, screen big. Yeah, yeah. It's very confusing. Um also, uh, you know how then all for all the Nintendo games are BA, right? So then so, so then you're you're trying to mm. it's, it sucks to like run with B. And then and then and then jump with A as Mario, for example, right? Right. And then for the Super Nintendo, Super Mario World, we would have Y as the run button, and then B was the jump, right? But for this game, it was B and A as jump, right? Um, but if you guys don't know, X also acts as B. Mm. So so if you want to play like the Super Nintendo version, you're, you're holding X, and then you're you're just gonna flatten your thumb down to, to jump. Just just hold, just press the X button. Use the X button. You don't have to remap the whole switch, but the, the whole switch, and fuck up. You know the, your your button mapping for all your other regular games. You know you just press X and A. So it, it takes a little getting used to. But then once you realize, like, oh, like it's just like Y and B, except it's just X and A now instead of A and B and A, right? So yeah, that's a little tip to to be a little bit more comfortable with the game. Uh, yeah. Because I, I I did play a little bit more. Because yeah, I, I I didn't say much about it in some sense because I just didn't play it that much. But I, I I play a little bit a little, little bit more. It's fun. It's fun. But still, there's there, there there's no friendly boards. That sucks. So. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty big omission. Uh, mm. I've done a few of the like the weekly tournaments. I actually need to check in because the first week I did. I think I only did one of them, so I felt mm. like I didn't get to see like true scoring. But I did them last week, and I feel like I got a good score. But I don't know exactly how it turned out so i'm gonna yeah, have to the, check ma- the master challenge this week is uh, that that final mario challenge where you beat the game uh going through all the warps um so i i, I have done everything except for that challenge um which is crazy because growing up that was how i beat mario uh, quite a bit was i would just i would just warp through warp all the way to war four one and then go to four two and then go all the way to eight one and just beat and just beat the, the final level and hooray i beat mario you know mm-hmm. um I think I've done that more than actually just played through the original regular Super Mario Brothers, uh, which is crazy. But uh, yeah, interesting challenge. Uh, re- really fun. And uh, definitely encouraging like the, the speed running tactic, you know? Um, yeah. Yeah. Baby's first speed running game. Yeah. I would say if you have any affinity for Nintendo NES games, definitely check this game out. It has a mm-hmm. lot of cool uh like made with love stuff like you can choose you can unlock different character profile pictures mm-hmm. and so some of them you can pick like really obscure little characters from mm-hmm. the different games uh if you want to do that there's also this is a really small detail when you're starting the game you get to create your profile which it's like mine says dustin can fly mm-hmm. you pick a tagline so mine says retro game collector but then you get to pick your favorite nes game to be mm-hmm. displayed Mm-hmm. It literally has, to my understanding, every NES game listed to pick from. Any NES game that you want mm-hmm. to just have listed. So I put 3D World Runner as my nice. favorite NES game. Holy crap. That's I don't know if one. it's my favorite. It's one of my most nostalgic games. But I thought, dude, I got to represent 3D World Runner on this one. So mm-hmm. neat I little detail. A, yeah, I put Dragon Warrior 3 on it. Nice. Dragon nice. Warrior 3. J- jrpg is my favorite nes game the oh yeah dude yeah i think i have the original dragon warrior cartridge still uh, that'd be so cool to own i i don't think i ever owned it i think i only rented it from blockbuster uh, uh th- renting games i think uh i think the original dragon warrior is actually really cheap it's the sequels that are expensive 
Oh yeah, yeah. you can get you can get Dragon Warrior on NES for eight bucks. Oh, loose. cool. Okay, yeah. I wish I can get get Dragon Quest Five for 3DS for eight bucks instead of four hundred. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very into yeah. it. So, so sad. So yeah, Nintendo World Championship, pretty fun game. Thirty bucks. Like I said, if you like NES games, I. I think it's awesome. I've just been playing a little bit each night. Sometimes I get really frustrated with it and I have to turn it off. Like when I was doing the Excite Bike challenges, I was having a real bad time with those, but eventually was able to to do it. So check it out. Guys, let's end this show with some questions from the audience. This one comes from Parks in Rect, who says, hello, PU crew. As we reach the halfway point of the year, what has been your Switch game of the year so far? What are you looking forward to to the second half of the final year of the Switch? Also, as this is probably the last show Dustin records before his paternity leave, can you eulogize him with Vitamin C's graduation while well, Vitamin C's graduation <laughs> plays in the background? Wow, how old is our audience that they know that song? Oh, I mean, that was a song even for us, Dustin. Like really? my sister's high school graduation, they used that song. Really? Um, Still? It's old. It was old at the time, but like, yeah, even even what? us being thirty, you know, and thirty one, that that song was definitely still being played. Yeah. Okay. Released in two thousand. So wow, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, they were still using it. Like we graduated. I graduated in twenty eleven. Oh no, nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, nineteen ninety nine. That's that's my year. Yeah, it was released in 19, 1999, studio album. Oh, first. okay. Yeah. It's a good song. Yeah. It's, if, if you haven't heard it, get ready to cry. That song's fucking sad. Right, really? <laughs> oh, my God. It, the whole point of it is like, I guess. you're never going to see your friends again, but you'll still be best friends forever in your heart. Like, it's sad. It, yeah. And maybe it hits different being a girl and like some of those friendships that, you know, it's like, yeah, we're, we're probably not going to hang out anymore. You're going to college and whatnot. And it's like, well, we're best friends in our memories. Like, that's fucking sad, man. That's a song to go lay down and sob to. <laughs> I think uh, I have one friend from high school that I'm still actively friends with. And it's Brandon, the one and only. He's it. That's all I got left. But it's OK. I have new friends. You now. killed the rest of them. Killed them. <laughs> They're gone. They're out of here. Yeah. Micah, are, are you friends with anyone from high school still? I keep in touch with a couple people. I'm the one who moved away, right, from our hometown. So mm. uh, it's not people I can hang out with anymore. But I do still keep in touch with, like, my best friend from high school. Uh, you know, we don't live nearby anymore, but I send her daughter, you know, Christmas gifts and stuff mm. like that. Like, we are, we're definitely still trying to keep the friendship alive, but mm. long-distance friendships are tough. Yeah. I, I'm basically not friends with anyone from high school except for my best buddy, Joey. Uh, which I mentioned before. Um, but that's about it. Uh, the guy I, I played Final Fantasy VII in Japanese with, um, I still kept in touch with recently, and he's a Skill Up fan. So when I was on Skill Up's podcast, he was like, wait, that's me he's talking about. I was like, yeah, <laughs> that's cool. That's I thought a- you said Skillet at first, like oh, the sh- Christian metal band, and I was like, oh, I haven't heard a dude. Skillet song <laughs> in, a, in, a, in a minute. <laughs> dude, I had to, I've seen Skillet, um, like not a million, but quite a few times because... They, when I went to some of these festivals where I was waiting to see a band like Under Oath or something like that, they were always playing earlier at the same stage when I was waiting around. So I saw, I've seen Skillet probably like five times. And guess what? (laughs) Not so good. Uh, Not so good. I'm not a Skillet fan, gotta say. Mm. But (laughs) Gojira opened up uh, uh, the Olympics. The satanic opening. Yeah, satanic opening. I don't, I don't, I don't understand why. You know, like when Little Nas X did his like little devil devil video, that like, oh my god, he's so satanic. I'm like, why are we doing this? Why, like, why do we do this every every few years? It's so so dumb. It's just the <laughs> devil. It's just it's just dim. You know, I don't know. Yeah, I thought. I mean, as far as the the Gojira stuff, I was like, that seems kind of cool. The other, I well, I don't, I don't even want to get into the other stuff because we're just gonna open up a. <laughs> <laughs> insanity in our comments but yeah who, who gives a shit anyways honestly yeah. so but the good go, the, the gojira opening was awesome fucking all of them standing in different balconies with the the castle that was sick yeah that was pretty cool okay so uh the actual question switch games oh, yeah. so far this year i was i was looking and it's like so mario rpg 
uh, Paper Mario, Luigi's Mansion 3, Princess Peach, NES World Championships. Oh, Luigi's Mansion 2, but yeah. Oh, Luigi's Mansion 2, which is, yeah. uh, you know, an HD remake. Yeah, so I guess Peach is Peach Showtime, you know. It's Peach Showtime for you, okay. It's Peach, Show, it's Peach Showtime, because it's the only original game. <laughs> it's the only new game. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I, I this has actually been this this has definitely been the slowest year for me in terms of playing the Switch. I think the only reason why the Switch is getting so much playtime is because I'm playing Dark Souls on it. You know, that's literally that literally the only reason why. Oh, I also didn't realize, but the Dark Souls Switch version, or I guess the remastered all the remastered versions, actually has a, a Souls dupe glitch. I did not realize oh. that it, it existed. Um, so I, I actually started a new run in the Switch Lite. Again, remember I had a Switch Lite with, with a new save. And I just started to dupe uh, uh, Souls in it. So I'm already level 300 Whoa. <laughs> on, on Dark Souls Remastered on the Switch Lite. Um, and I haven't even finished Undead Burg yet. So. Micah, what, what's been your... I, I, we don't have to do just Nintendo, too. It can be... Because yeah, I can't. I yeah. can't, you know? Oregon it's trail. like... Well, it's the Unicorn Overlord is my favorite game I've played on Switch so far this year. I think that game is made for handheld. It's a lengthy game. It has a, a lot of content. Being able to pick it up and play it for five, ten minutes at a time, do a battle, you know, put it down. That is my favorite game I've played on Switch so far this year. I did, obviously, yeah, had a great time uh, so far with Oregon Trail. But Unicorn Overlord really runs well on Switch. Highly recommend it there. As far as games coming up, like the game I'm anticipating the most, I'm going to take Zelda out of the conversation because that's, I mean, it's, that's probably going to be the best of the ones coming up. <laughs> I'm pretty excited and I hope it reviews well for Super Mario Party Jamboree. I love Mario Party. I love having friends over to play it. Super Mario Party, the original sucked. And then Superstars was really good. So I'm hoping Jamboree is the Mario Party Switch game, the new Mario Party Switch game that we've always hoped for. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Other options, Mario and Luigi Brothership and Zelda. And there's a, of course, the Famicom De Detective Club game coming the end of August that we talked a little bit about last episode. Mm -hmm. But what are you guys looking forward to coming up? Gene, what about what 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 of the I mean, I guess there's not a lot of options unless you want to go outside of Nintendo, of course. I mean, Metro Prime, right? Um, oh, yeah, Zelda, obviously. But I am I am actually looking forward to Emio. Um, I do like the Famicom Detective Club series. Um and uh, I'm just excited. Uh, I, I'm, I'm just excited to see Yoshi, Yo, Yoshi Sakamoto uh, get some shine. So um, I'll be excited for that, mostly. Micah, on this list, we have Sonic X Shadow Generations. I'm assuming that's your number one. <laughs> Goodness. I mean, what else could it be? Yeah, oh, I, uh, I, I will have to get that one, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> no, between I am excited for the Zelda game where you play as little Zelda. That looks very cute. I'm going to play that. I really mean it. Um, I am not familiar at all with Famicom Detective Club, but I am intrigued by Emio as well. Uh, the non-exclusive title, of course, Dragon Quest Three, the 2D HD mm. remake, that is top of my list for end of this year. I think that's October. So that that's actually like my just in general most anticipated game for the second half of this year but there's a couple more gems laying in the dirt we got a couple more potatoes in the dirt that we're gonna dig on out you know as we close out the year oh well yeah here i'm looking at ign's list right now there's a ton of games i miss uh dragon quest 3 hd obviously right mm -hmm. um donkey kong country hd not so much that's fine nah. uh, that wasn't even listed on this that's yeah that's a good point um, I did not, I, I completely miss this and I should check it out. Um, but Ace Combat 7, Skies Unknown Deluxe Edition was exclusive for the Switch, um, mm. which is crazy. And I'll have to check that out. I'm a huge Ace Combat fan. Love that series. So um, I, I heard that that was coming and I did not realize that it was already out, but it came out July 11th. So that's going to be, have to, I'm going to have to check that one out. All right. Next question here comes from nevitz hello brick breakers do you ever uh do you ever have a great time playing a game and then your pet in my case a cat jumps in your lap and throws off your whole groove 
Maybe the two of you deal with the uncomfortableness together and then your pet tr slowly tries to lay on your hand so you can't play anymore. Or is this just me? Thanks. So we're all pet owners here. Micah, is, is Rush or Treble throwing off your game? Oh, Treble is notorious for if there's something on your lap, she will just walk over and nudge her head, you know, in the way she wants. If it's a laptop, she wants you to pick it up so she can sit there instead. She's very jealous. Uh, she is usually like come, you know, nine o'clock, 10 o'clock. She's done playing for the day, wants to just lay down, always on a lap, though. And so I had mentioned one time when I said how heavy the PS5 controller was and someone was like, what are you holding it out in front of you? And I realized. Yeah, because my dog is on my lap and the vibration bothers her. She'll start barking. So I am typically holding my hands up to play games if I'm playing on the TV, for example. Of course, if I'm playing the Switch, you're holding that. But it's like, yeah, I realize I am usually holding the controller up off of my lap because there's usually a dog in it. So she is notorious for doing that. You don't want that to happen in the middle of Call of Duty or anything like that. That's that's not a good time. Usually if I'm just playing Switch and I can easily pause it, it's no problem at all. But she will occasionally do that when it's like, no, 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 I'm right in the middle of something like, go away, go away, you know, and then you feel guilty and then you feel bad. But yeah, she, she's always doing that. Gene, is, is Jack a needy boy when you're gaming? Oh, yeah, he's always, he's always uh, uh, hopping on me. Every, every single time he wakes up, um, he has a routine. He either goes to, goes to get a nibble, uh, nibble some kibble and then just jumps up on my belly. Um, and dude, you guys see him on the podcast every single time. Every single time I sit at my desk, he's, he, he always got to uh, jump up on here and, and rest on my um, rest on my wrists. You know, he's a very, very needy boy. Yeah. Frisk, she'll either, luckily, she's either laying on my lap or Holly's lap. But either, sometimes she does this thing where she'll kind of lay. I call it her sexy pose. And she does, she just goes... <laughs> Like this, she just kind of like, like demand. She's like, hey, now, like you got to pet me now. So mm -hmm. I'll pet her for a little bit and then I'll go back to playing. And she just does the same thing. And I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, I can't do this forever. Mm -hmm. Other times I'll be playing and she'll just start licking my hands, like licking oh, yeah. my Trouble fingers. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, man. Like I'm especially a dude. When I was playing like Elden Ring. It's like, no, no, no. At some point, especially during that last fight, I was like, frisk. Your boy's got to lock in right now. Oh, yeah. I got to lock Wait. in. You got to get off. I love you. You got to get off me right now. I can't do so, this. So the, so this actually happened I was, as I was playing Dark Souls on Switch. Um, you know, the giant blacksmith in Anor An Orlando? Yes. Yes. Um, Jack made me hit him. <sighs> so he started attacking me. And I was like, no, my boy, I've never hit that guy before. I love that giant. The giant is my boy. You know, I was so sad yeah. when you see it, when you see his fate later on in the Dark Souls series. He was my boy. So I, I was like, oh, fuck, Jack. God damn it. So I ran all the way. And this was before I unlocked the Lord Vessel. So like I was like, screw it out. And, and I had to wait. I had to wait until after getting the Lord Vessel so I can. Uh, oh, wait, no, 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 no. I actually I, I actually went back to the Gargoyles. Uh, to teleport myself back to Sen's Fortress, and I went through Sen's Fortress backwards so I can climb up to the church tower to have my uh, my sins absolved by 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 that guy up in in the church bell. So the so I can so I can have the giant forgive me because I needed the giant to forgive me so I can buy some large Titan Eight shards and upgrade my <laughs> weapons. But Jack made me press R two at the wrong moment. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that, I mean that's what happens in the Souls games uh, that you can uh, that you can attack the, the the shop keeps and once you do that you're fucked like the the, the, the shop's close you're done with the, you're done with that for the game but but then there is a mechanic where you can get yourself forgiven by these characters if you if you spend eighty thousand so, or some souls experience points on them so I had to farm that shit too which is so crazy <laughs> yeah uh. yeah the 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 puppies the kitties. They can be very annoying, but it also can be quite nice when you're chilling, playing a game and they're just sleeping in your lap. I love that. I do like that. I love that. Oh, yeah. That's very Especially nice. a scary game. There's mm -hmm. nothing like I'm feeling afraid and this little dog's just peacefully napping mm -hmm. on my lap. And I look at her, I'm like, everything's fine in mm -hmm. the real world. You're only afraid in this wacko game that you're playing. Mm -hmm. It definitely does bring me like a sense of like calm if I'm like either reading a scary book or playing a scary game and Treble's right there with me. I feel better. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Jack is a uh, Jack will be snoring too. So, 
Yeah, oh, they yeah. snore a lot. <laughs> uh, last question. This is a quick one. Uh, this name, I think, is Trelond. Trilond says, hello, crusty crew. Question and gut feeling. Do you feel the classic Pokemon games we grew up on, red, blue, gold, etc., will ever make its way to Nintendo Switch Online? They are literally sitting on money with these games. Or do you think it would be a conflict of interest for Nintendo because people would rather play those than the new ones? Have a good show. So, yeah, you bring up the point of giving an option instead of buying the new one. I think about on the Nintendo 64 online, you can't play Smash Brothers, the OG Smash. It's not available on there. I wonder if that is a thing where they're like some people would rather play this than buy the new one. I think they'd probably be safe to release it at this point with it being this long after Ultimate. But I 100% think this would be the case with Pokemon that people would rather just play. They want to play these old ones, but when they're not, not available, they're like, well, I guess I'll check out the new one. And I think the other thing, too, is that their value as games are higher than the amount of the subscription where I could see a situation where they sell these and make maybe add some other features and make it like an individual purchase instead of a a game on the service. But Gene, do you wish these Pokemon games were on there? Do you think what do you think is holding Nintendo back from from doing that? Yeah, I think so. I, th- I, th- I think, you know, why would you, you know, uh, they, clo- they closed the 3DS store down. Luigi's Mansion 2 is gone. Now they're selling Luigi's Mansion 2 again, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so Nintendo is not, uh, uh, if there, there's one thing I can definitely criticize Nintendo on is that they're fucking, they don't give a shit about preservation uh, uh, at all. Uh, you know, it sucks that a lot of these Nintendo games are just available only on the service, you know? So even if they're only on the service, it's it still sucks that they're just on there, you know? Um, so... Yeah, it sucks that the Xbox 360 store is closing down, but hey, at least uh, you could still you still could have bought Xbox 360 games for a while. You know, I don't know. I don't. Know. It, it, yeah. it all sucks. I hate this shit. Well, I think you could buy Pokemon at least Red and Blue on the 3DS eShop, but yeah. now that's closed. Yeah, that's so closed. so there is no way to buy those games. So go and emulate them. Emulate yeah, them and, and feel them. no sin has been caused because who cares? Yeah, not gonna sell it, to you. it sucks because like Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee are basically Pokemon Red, Yellow, and Blue or whatever, right? Um, yeah, or, or, or Green. But you know, it has a completely different combat system. You can't, you, you don't really fight po- Pokemon um, uh, when you're trying to catch them out in the field. And for one, I actually kind of like that. I actually uh, uh, prefer almost prefer that experience over over the regular one. But if you want the battle system, you know, it's it's only on the original Game Boy versions. Um, and I miss those versions. I would love to play them right now. You know. Yeah, Micah, do you think uh, Nintendo will ever do this? And if they did, would you check them out? Maybe I don't have much interest in these, even the older Pokemon titles, but I do agree that with the idea that, yeah, offering these on the service, they they could get way more value if they wanted to release like a collection and like really have you pay for them, right? Or or do remasters, but it's going to take away people from the new titles. I think it at the same time it would be valuable insight for Nintendo to prove whether or not it's like, look, man, if you had just a boatload of people playing these old ones, it's proof of what people want. I'm not saying you go and make a completely retro style Pokemon game, but maybe you bring some of these old features that people really miss. If you had a huge outpouring of people want games like this, maybe you make a new one in the old style, at least to some degree. But no, I I agree that between the value of these games versus like the online service cost and also taking players away from new releases, like you mentioned with Smash, I think it's just one of those things that it's uh, Nintendo on on one hand, it's a good move because people would play it. On the other hand, it really could hurt sales of newer games. I don't think they're going to do that. Yeah, it's funny in the retro scene, a lot of times people are like, why are Pokemon games so expensive to buy physically the old ones? Because you would think they are probably some of the most common, most printed games, but 
the demand for these games is so high because these this is the number one people are like, oh, I want to get a Game Boy or I just bought an analog pocket. I want to buy some of my old games. One of the first things they think of is Pokemon. So it's how you get like Pokemon Red, $60 loose right now. Pokemon Fire Red, $112 loose. So luckily, the, some the not all of them, but quite a few Pokemon games I've just had over the years. I'm very thankful because, dude, Emerald, I think Emerald is like, 200 now pokemon emerald maybe those are the ones you're going to be hoping to go to a local garage sale yard sale and just hoping somebody has a bin of old games that they don't know what they have i don't mean that in a mean way but you're just hoping that some parent is like just cleaning out a basement and you'll find them because Mm -hmm. like you said they are they should be very common because who the fuck had a game boy it didn't have a pokemon game for it but they're valuable even if they were relatively common those are the games you're searching for at yard sales, tag sales, whatever. Yeah, it's it's insane. Pokemon Emerald. So let's say in December 2017, you could get it for twenty five dollars loose. Today, it is two hundred and six dollars for Hot Pokemon dog. Emerald. So prices have gone up quite a bit, but we'll see. Nintendo will probably never do it because you want them to do it. And they are not interested in what you want. They are only interested in making money well they're not even always interested in making money clearly no, with this one if that was true they'd have like way more amiibo and like they would have done a pokemon collection you know they they don't even want our money they just want our souls yep well on that note nintendo wants your souls it's time to wrap up this episode of punching up certainly my last for a little bit so it is a sorrowful goodbye for now maybe it is time to play the vitamin c song uh right now so uh thank you guys of course for being with me thank you to the audience for hanging out uh these folks of course will be back with brad in two weeks but let's say goodbye to them micah thanks for joining me and uh see you soon of course yeah i'm really glad you were able to be with us this time dustin i'm not gonna do another you know uh what what's the word i want like a mushy send off like we did last time Mm -hmm. you only get one but I will say, since we have some extra planning time, Dustin, you got to get Dare You to Move by Switchfoot keyed up on a CD oh. player. As soon as the baby starts to emerge, you got to do the welcome to the world. You got to have it yeah. ready, Dustin. We didn't think of it this last time. Now we have time to plan. I need you to get a CD player, boombox, whatever. You got to have this ready. Uh, I absolutely love that song. I've loved that song for many years. And Who doesn't love Switchfoot? <laughs> dude, Switchfoot rules. I think they've kind of fallen off in the last few albums, but I am a huge Switchfoot yeah. fan. And I have a very fanboy memory of hearing, seeing that song live. And I was at the, near the front and John Foreman was there. And he like he was singing it and I could see him. And I locked eyes with him during the chorus of that song. Pretty arousing. <laughs> Just going to say, <laughs> put that out. It's an arousing moment for me. <laughs> Gene, thank you for hanging out today. We'll see you later. I'll see you around, Dustin. Uh, geez, you're going to be a different person by the time we see you again. 100%. But I'm going to be... Touch and, and I got basketball. my new balances ready. Yeah. For Hell now. yeah, dog. <laughs> so. Yeah, but best of luck to you and Holly. I, I'm keeping you both in my prayers. Thank you. Yeah, we'll let... You... So, the people that are going to find out first, when it's before the baby's even born, when it's go mm-hmm. time, I'm going to call my parents, Holly's parents, and there will be a message in the staff discord. Uh, so you guys will know. We need to know. <laughs> you guys will know. I mean, I want you guys to know, but also it's, an, it's a, a, a note to Lockmore and Ben and Jimmy that's like, okay, well, you got work to do now. It's, ha- it's happening, yeah. You guys it's will know. Tor- the torch is being passed on from, yeah. from, from Biden to your Biden. I'm Jimmy, Biden. I'm Jimmy. Jimmy Locke. Dude, Jimmy does this Locke mean I'm going to grow six inches? You know, at, oh, right after. Right. This? <laughs> It'd be nice to be a little taller. So I mean, it, it, it's going to be strange because you know you could grow your hair out, and we're going to be like, huh? They replaced Dustin. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Grow your hair what out. What if again. I was thinking like, what if I came back with a mustache? Oh, Just hell a yeah, mustache? dude! Wow. Like, yeah. Dustin, you have an opportunity here, all right? Like, you have an opportunity, whether you stick with it or not, 
to just do one like funny comeback of like we haven't seen Dustin in a couple of weeks and he comes back and he's wearing like a raccoon tail hat and got like a mustache <laughs> on like you have take this opportunity man you got to yeah. work with it well we haven't seen Dustin's baby face before have we have we ever have you ever been clean shaven on camera before one time I was pretty dang close because I used the wrong attachment on my <laughs> my trimmer so I was really close but not like clean shaven yeah so maybe. I'm trying to think of maybe some of the early sacred symbols. Probably, Dude, yeah. when I don't when I don't have this, it's like suddenly I'll start getting ID'd again for like if I get it like at a bar or something like mm -hmm. it. I become a baby once again. So we'll see. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, to the audience. Thank you guys for hanging out. We'll be back very soon. We'll see you later. Punching Up, a Nintendo podcast, is a product of Last Stand Media and Collins Last Stand LLC, and is proudly recorded in the USA. The show is written and produced by me, Dustin Furman. My co-hosts are Gene Park, Dagan Moriarty, and Micah Watson. The show is edited by associate producer Ben Smith. All of Last Stand's theme music is by Ramon Narvaez. Punching Up, along with the rest of Last Stand Media shows, are fan-funded on Patreon at patreon.com slash laststandmedia. The following names are at the producer level on Patreon, our highest tier, and we're grateful for your kind contributions and generosity to our independent endeavor. Thank you.